Okay, we are live. Hi, everybody. This is Eric from longboxreview.com. Hey, everybody. Guess what? I have a very special guest on the show who hasn't been on for a long time. Travis. Yay. Yay. It really has been a long time, hasn't it? I mean, it has. I was about that. It's been way too long. Way too long. You know, uh, there there was that time where I said the thing and you got mad at me and we haven't talked in forever. Yeah. No, just That's kidding. Sad. And then, co- and then comics brought us back together. Comics, comics mend riffs. That's right. You heard it, you heard it here, fo- uh, first, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so great to see you and talk with you, Travis. Yeah, right. On. Even though it was just like what a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So exactly. So Travis and I are here to talk about uh, our experiences at Emerald City Comic Con 2016. Uh, We both were able to go to that. And uh, I just wanted to get together and uh, talk with Travis and uh, just chat about this, our experiences there, what, you know, things that we we, uh, saw or listened to that we thought we should uh, uh, talk about. And I'm saying that phrase a lot. So let's move past that and uh, professionalism, right? Yeah. Uh, but first, I, I, I need to, I need to uh, do some um, business. Uh, this episode is, uh, has a sponsor, uh, uh, Cover Me Tees at Cover Me Tees. That's Cover Me, just as, as it's normally spelled with, with T's, T-E-S, all one word, CoverMeTees.com. That is the online presence of the the fine folks who, and, and if you're watching the video, you can see my my new logo on my new shirt that they did. Uh, so uh, uh, the proprietor of Cover Me Tees is my good friend Greg, who's been on the podcast a couple times, I think, and uh, I hired him to to come up with a brand new logo for uh, Long Box Review, and it looks pretty snazzy. It does. And uh, thank you. I I, I was I'm. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect when, when you know, you, you give you give a creative person uh, carte blanche to to do what they want. And and uh, Greg just came back with just a, a great design. I loved it. Um, you have the little Kirby uh, dots type uh-huh. thing uh-huh. Or, or not not Kirby. I'm sorry. It's just the, the old printing comic book printing right. uh, aspect to it. And uh, I love that. I, I had no idea he was going to do something like that, and and uh, he gave me a few different options. This uh, what's what you're seeing on the on my shirt is the the, the wide version of the logo, but then I also have uh, the square version that I'll, that'll show up in the, the podcast feed and everywhere uh, my uh, my presence is online now. So uh, I moved away from that old uh, um, uh, dialogue box uh, or, or balloon word balloon. Sorry. Word bubble um, uh, everywhere. So everybody should be seeing that new logo. Anyway, I, I love it. Uh, anyway, so if you are looking for some graphic design uh, work that you want done or you uh, specifically want some T-shirts printed up or even designed and printed up, Cover Me Tees will have you covered. So there we go. Okay. Emerald City Comic Con 2016. Travis, how many years... Have you been going to Emerald City? How many years has it been? Um, was it 2010 or 2011 was the first year I went. This is year number five because I skipped one year. So I've gone five years now. Yeah, two years ago, I, I, I skipped a year and hated every second of it. <laughs> that was the longest weekend of my life, I think. Not not going and then seeing all the tweets and and whatnot coming out of there. So, um, yeah, love it. It's lots of fun. Lots of fun. Was it 2010? I thought it was 2009 because we both went the same. I was going to look this up. Dang it! Uh, I thought we we went this the for the first time the same year, right? Yeah, pretty so was sure. It 2000, was it 2009? Because I because I, I remember thinking because th- isn't 2010? No. No, when is the 10th anniversary? No, next year is the 15th anniversary. So 2012 was the 10th. I know, I think you're right. I think maybe it is 2000. Yeah, 2010. I, I, yeah. yeah, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about it. Yeah. So yeah, because 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 DC had a really big presence that first year. Jeff Johns was there. We got to yeah. see him and, and, and whatnot. So that was really cool. So yeah, I, I've been every year. I, I didn't I didn't skip one like you did. 
Um, so this will be the the sixth year in a row, I guess, that, I, that I've been. Mm -hmm. uh, great show, but I have a few caveats about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so maybe, this, huh? This last year, 2016, was the first year that ReadPop uh, uh, managed it from the get-go, I, I believe. Yeah. Fully, mm -hmm. yeah, fully, yeah. So uh, the 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 con originator um, uh, showrunner Jim Dimonakis uh, stepped aside. Based, uh, is it accurate to say he sold the show to yeah, Red Pop? He yeah. did. He sold. He sold it. To, you know, it was his brand. He sold it to. He sold it to them right right before um, MS City Comic Con last year. I mean, like a month or two right beforehand last year. Mm -hmm. But of course, it was already planned and whatnot. So you, you're right. This is the first year we will we see the full management of the new people doing it. So as as with any change <laughs> in your life, you're always a little worried about how things are going to go, especially exactly. when it goes from what what feels like a very grassroots personal effort on Mr. Demonakis's Demonakis's part to a, a more shall we say corporate entity. Mm, mm, for sure. Yeah. So uh, let's let's just talk about that a little bit because okay. So let's uh, let's our, uh, uh, turn our minds back in time to the day that they announced the tickets went on sale. And so I actually <laughs> because because the year before, actually uh, a year or two before, um, the the three day or four day passes because wasn't last year the first four day or am i misremembering that yeah the last year would have been the first time okay right? so yeah they, so they went from three no days. it was three day today this year was the first four was four it? day was it really? yeah 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 because this is the first year i've missed a day no 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 because because i remember going to one i think it was two years ago because thursday was a half day and then oh, this right. year thursday was a longer a full, day it was a full day right right you're right you're right so, um, so, but, but last year tickets sold out pretty quickly. I don't remember exactly how long it took. Do you? Right. It was pretty fast for the, for the, for the, the, the 40 the full, Yeah. I, I don't remember, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was fairly quick, but I mean, it wasn't, yeah, I mean, it was fairly quick. Well, and, and on top of that too, the, 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 uh, the Sheraton, which is the hotel right across the street from the convention center. Right. Uh, that sold out really quickly last year I act, last year i actually got hotel tick hotel reservations before i bought tickets which was really smart of you because, because the hotels <laughs> go faster than tickets do exactly and 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 uh i didn't realize that because the you know two years ago at that time uh i was able to get the sheraton and i didn't you know i didn't go online the same day that tickets went on sale to secure the hotel and I was still able to get to the Sheridan. Yeah. So last year I missed that. I mean, it was, it was, uh, three days later. I think it was the part of the problem was last year I was out of town. My wife and I were out of town right. or we were busy doing something where we weren't able to be at home to, to do all this stuff. Right. And so, you know, when I, three days later, I think is my, if my memory serves me, which it probably doesn't, but, uh, three days later, I get online and go to, you know, get the tickets, which I got no problem. Go to the hotel and Sheraton's completely sold out. So we had to go to a different hotel, which actually wasn't bad. It was, it's the motif, um, which is actually pretty good. It's only a, like a block and a half away. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it was fine. Uh, my wife, though, loves a Sheraton. So yeah. <laughs> this year going into it, she told me, hey, you are going to get the Sheraton. I'm like, okay. <laughs> But I knew, you know, because because of our experience uh, the last year, I decided I actually took the day off. And I should have <laughs> from work. I, I should have. Yeah, and and so I so I did that, and um, uh, as I recall, the four day passes sold out within half an hour. Yeah, yeah. I less didn't. Than, I didn't get. I didn't get four day passes. Right. Yeah. We get. Yeah. I'm. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, uh, so yeah, so I get the four day passes and I got the Sheraton, uh, but because of, I got the Sheraton, but the, because we take our, 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 our kids, our granddaughters to the show with us, um, what they were selling for 
for the four days that I wanted wasn't didn't appear to me. I think it was just one bed, one king right. size bed. I could not get two beds. Mm -hmm. So I was a little concerned about that. That all turned out in the end. Okay. But even after it was, it was like a week later or more where we actually changed. So we actually did have to stay at the motif on, uh, for Thursday, mm -hmm. but then we we're able to get the Sheraton for three days. And that's, and I, and I, we did that because I had, had talked to you about that. Right. Because you had well, a similar situation. Right, because when you went into the, because of course they have deals, right? They have a package, you know, they have a deal that if you're, if you're, you know, part of the con during that weekend, you can, you know, suppose that they're giving you, you know, some deal. I don't know if they are or not, to be quite honest. And they only have so many of those deals available. And when you go to the website and you click in and you, and you say you want to be there for the whole con, you know, go th get there Thursday, you know, well, no, it'd be Wednesday night through the con, those were gone, like instantaneously gone. Um, but you could go in and say, I wanted to be there one less day and there were still lots available and whatnot. And that's what I right. had done. And then to tell you, hey, you know, we can, you know, jump on fewer days kind of a thing. So, which yeah. I guess, which I guess worked out okay for me because yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the four day passes. Anyway, the four day passes by the time I got home from work at lunchtime to, to, um, start purchasing the tickets four day passes were already gone and so i got the the three day pass the the um friday through sunday so mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly so so that was one thing that and that and that's not that's not management's fault that's that is just the a desire. testament to yeah to the desire of people like us who want to go to the show yeah so i mean that's good that they that they're getting um, that many people now, let me, so let, since I'm talking about that, Travis, do you feel, cause Saturday is always the busiest day uh -huh. at the con. It always has been. Oh, yeah. Um, do you, do you feel like, cause I haven't seen numbers from Emerald city. Yeah, I haven't either. Uh, of course I haven't really been looking either, but, um, uh, do, do you feel like that Saturday, this year's Saturday was any busier than say last year's? No. Okay. I, I didn't think I, it was. I actually thought, I actually thought it was better for whatever reason. I mean, it was, you know, it's still, it's super crowded, but I felt like it could move around a lot easier this year than prior year. Cause I mean, the year before, I mean, there were years before that they get the place so crowded on Saturday that the fire marshal would show up and they would keep people from going in and out of the building. I mean, if you left the building, you couldn't go back into the building until they thought X number of people left the building again. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that year? Yeah. That's, I guess that's been, what three years ago? I think was yeah. when that yeah. was when was when they had that issue. So clearly they figured out, you know what? Regardless of how many people want to come, we can only sell, you know, X number of of, of tickets. Well, and, and, and so I think they figured out whatever that whatever that sweet spot is. And so I thought, I don't know this this year did not seem as bad on Saturday as the year before. The year before on Saturday, I swear, everywhere you went, you could only take steps that were like three inches, kind of a thing. You just <laughs> barely crawled all along, and I didn't think it was as bad. Well, and, and also in, in a, a, a last year, definitely maybe, maybe even two years ago, they expanded into the building across the street. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. And I think they had stuff, uh, in the hotel too. Yeah. All the gaming stuff, all the yes. gaming stuff was in the, was in the ballrooms of the Sheridan across the street. Right. Yeah. So, so they were able to expand into other areas and therefore that kept the, the traffic on the main floor down a little bit. So yeah, I, I feel the same way as you do it. it. It didn't seem like Saturday was, uh, any busier, um, than, than in previous years. So that, that was good. And I, yeah, I felt more comfortable moving around. Although man, you know what, this is, this is my first gripe, I guess. Um, <laughs> this is to fellow fans. Don't stop in the middle of the main walkway to take pictures, please. Or, or just to have a conversation or, you know, whatever. Don't stop. Move to the side. Right. <laughs> so right. people can pass. No doubt. Uh, right. Uh, so annoying. Con etiquette. Uh, yes. Okay. So, so that, so that's, that's the lead into all this. That's the background to the situation. So, you know, probably, you know, I, I was not too hmm, pleased, I guess, with, with, so unfairly I, I will i will admit unfairly i'm thinking well they you know the management screwed something up so you know that the, the, they sold out so fast they didn't anticipate the need you know whatever but that's really not their fault uh i you're i think you're exactly right they figured out what 
what the uh, what would you say the sweet spot is sweet as spot. far as the attendance and you know they're not going to oversell they can't legally they can't do that right otherwise they'll they'll get shut down um so so you know no big deal but um uh do well i well, i'll get into it as 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 i talk about the individual days uh in my experiences there but uh do you have any other thoughts about uh, the 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 read pop management of emerald city going into it well, I, you know, I'm apprehensive. You know, as soon as something becomes a personal thing, it becomes a corporate thing. You know, not that I don't work for a corporation, but um, you know, you kind of, <laughs> you kind of um, get suspect as to uh, is it still going to have the love that the that the con I think had before that. I mean, what, I mean, I, I really felt like it had been run with you know some ideals in mind, and and I wonder if those ideals will get put you, aside for the 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 cash because now it's a business i mean it's always been a business right but it's a business based on love i mean it's like the difference between it's the difference between mom and pop comic book shop and barnes and noble selling comic books or or hastings selling comic books right yeah you know there it's just it's just a product um, and you would assume the mom and pop, at least the good ones, the mom and pop um, comic book store, it's as much about the fact that they love comic books and selling comic books and that sort of thing versus this is just in our product we put on our shelves and want to, I want to shovel along. You know, that's my, always my concerns going, going into that sort of thing when it changes right. like that. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had the same apprehensions. As a matter uh, of fact, um, um, the, the guy he's still he's part he became uh, in selling that he, he also became part of management i mean mm -hmm. they they put him in charge of being one of the execs to make all these places run he was actually on the other side of the united states i believe during this weekend right right do you do you know where what he was doing i have no idea okay i, I, I don't okay. i mean I, I follow him on twitter but i don't like following him that closely right and, right, right and it doesn't really matter i just thought it was interesting because i know in years past you know he's there because it's his thing Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's no longer his thing. So he's not there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I also wanted to just real quick, uh, uh, just uh, give a shout out to the minions at Emerald, at Emerald City Comic Con, because uh, as always, you know, these are volunteer folks uh, yeah, who they have help a bad out. job. <laughs> oh, my God. Do they ever dealing with cranky fans and lines and, you know, all this stuff. Uh, I had, I've never had a bad experience with, with a minion. And, uh, I, I think that they just keep getting better and better in terms of their, the, the service that they provide at the con. So you clearly weren't buying Funko Pops. Uh, no, I, cause, cause no. if you were part of that whole thing, you would have a different opinion. Oh, okay. Just, just saying, I mean, <laughs> I, I personally wasn't buying Funko Pops. Friends of mine were. And so I kind of, milled around that area to talk with them and whatnot and um i, I won't get into it too much because i mean for me it's secondhand kind of experience but uh they handled because funko pop had a bunch of exclusives there at emerald city comic con which of course you know makes everybody want to run out and get them their their choices every day of the con as to how they were going to handle that were kind of piss poor so oh yeah i mean so the first the first couple days um they kind of let the funko pop line which is clear at the very back of the con basically to go through the entire con floor to get to it um it um the first day it friday anyway i don't well no thursday the line closed three minutes after the doors opened oh my gosh they, they cut it off and said anybody else who came sorry go away um wow. friday it was the line was closed before the con opened. So Friday morning, they must have opened the doors a few minutes before 10. And the line was actually closed before 10 o'clock. I had friends standing in line and they were farther back in the line. And they actually told them to go away, that the line was closed, that they were going to sell as many as they were going to sell that day already. And that was literally before 10 o'clock before the con opened up. Um, same thing happened on Saturday. On Sunday, they kind of hunted and pecked through the early lineup as to who they were going to let get in line. And what? then after people were in line, they started pulling people. The, and it was not the Funko people. It was the minions uh, were pulling people out of line and telling them they couldn't be in line. Well, the problem was if you're an exhibitor, right? 
if you're an artist or an exhibitor, you get into the con beforehand, right? Set up your stuff and whatever. You, you've got a pass to be there beforehand. The first days of the con, the exhibitors lined up to buy everything. And so that's what happened every day. Instead of the fans getting first shot, the people who are already in the con floor were lining up. So you literally had people who were selling Funko Pops on the other side of, of the con were lining up first to buy the exclusives. I mean, and the exclusives, some of the exclusives of the Funko Pop stuff were already on eBay pre-sale for $300 for oh a $15 Funko Pop. God, what? what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so clearly if you're just a fan, not wanting you know, to sell it, but you're just wanting one because it's what you want. You want that Green Goblin, that exclusive Green Goblin or whatever. Sorry. It all, um, uh, almost every day it did not go to fans. It went to, you know, it went to um, the speculators and the people who were running the other exhibits so they could put them on their wall of Funko Pops. Because, you know, there were a couple places that were selling, you know, Funko Pops. So they were just going over and buying them early and then selling them at their own places. Well, I I would say more than a couple because that was, that was one of my observations about the show in general was that, you know, the, the Funko Pops have always been there ever since we've started going to Emerald City Comic Con. But right. it was usually like one place. It started uh, out, as far as I remember, huge. one place. I mean, Funko, yeah. And now, yeah, and not only do you have all the vendors selling a bunch of these these Funko Pops, but you actually had the the company there. Right. Do, I don't, and I don't, I don't recall seeing them there last year. Maybe I just missed it. Yeah. I, I don't think they were there last year. I mean, they, yeah. I think there were some exclusive Funko Pops, but not but not the company there not, selling a bunch right, of them. Not the right. presents. Yeah, right. So, so wow, that's that's incredible. So let, let, let me go back to what you said earlier about the, the minions. So were the minions pulling... Who were they pulling out? Were they pulling out of they the line? Pulling, the, 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 on Sunday, they were pulling people out that they were suspect were the continued um, exhibitors. Okay, um, is what they're trying to pull out. But but there's no there's no identification, right? As an exhibitor, if you buy, you have your exhibitor badge. But if you go and buy a regular badge too, and you're standing there with your regular badge, how do they how do they argue the point? And so they were just kind of going through and and. You know, one person I know, they, they pulled her, right, they pulled her out of line because she was there so early. I mean, she actually had a VIP pass. She ended up going and buying a VIP pass because she wanted to get in early enough to try and get one of the exclusive things. Oh, no. Her, yeah, yeah. They pulled her out of the line. They put her back in the line. Of course, they put her back in the line much later into the line. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, and then they come by and go, I was actually there when they came by and went, oops, sorry. They gave her some, you know, some discount thing on you know, buying some of the corporate products that they, you know, that they sell, you know, the, the, the con shirts and stuff like that. Oh boy. So they gave her a 20% discount on buying a t-shirt versus there were only, you know, 300 of these things. And now I don't get one because you pulled me out of line. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, wow. So that whole aspect of, I'm just thinking the whole time, thank God I'm not interested in the Funko pop thing because <laughs> that would bum me out. I mean, kudos to my friends, you know, they kind of went, okay, let's just move on and they'd be happy about everything else, you know? Um, Cause normally, uh, you know, and one of the persons it's, it was their first con and I'm kind of like, oops, you know, this is how you, this is how you, you know, you, what you try to do is you focus on the one thing you really want, get there early, get that thing. And then the rest of the cons gravy. Right. I mean, that's how it's always been for me in the years past when I'm like, okay, I want art from this person or something. I rush to that table first, get myself on that you know, on that commission list. And then I'm happy. Whatever else I get after that is just extra gravy. I got the goal. And that's what they tried doing. And of course, it was the whole Funko Pop disaster, you know, for four days in a row. So I don't know. Well, and so, you know, we not every con goes as smoothly as I'm sure the the, sure. the promoter would like and, yeah. and the fans as well. Sure. But, you know, uh, uh, so far, we, you know, I think we've seen improvements from Mr. Demonakis oh. when he was running it. So, yeah. So the question is, you know, next year, you know, will will this same situation occur again? And and I'm hoping, obviously, that, that they yeah, will fix it. I think they'll fix it because I think they already acknowledged that it was kind of a a zoo. Well, yeah, and, and they tried fixing it on Sunday, and and of course, then they left it up to the poor people who are standing there's decisions as to what was going to happen. Which, if you pick wrong, clearly you've just made fans pretty irritated right. over that whole that whole thing. But I mean, other than like I said, that kind of that secondhand experience around that. I had nothing but great experiences. The, the few places that I had to queue up to, to talk to people, whatever, if I'm standing next to that minion, 
that minion was great. They were friendly. They were talking about whatever, you know, I didn't have minions barking at me to, to move. Cause I wasn't moving when it wasn't me. That wasn't, you know, I mean, cause on Saturday there's places where you get a little bottleneck and whatnot. You know, there wasn't somebody, you know, barking at me for doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. So I don't know. I, I, I as a whole, um, I mean, it's been great. And those people have been great. And like, I, and like you said, kudos to them because I mean, I think they get into the con for free, but I don't know how much time they actually get to themselves to enjoy right. stuff. And it's a zoo. I mean, you're, you know, there's 40 some thousand people, I'm guessing, cruise through that place. So, yeah. 40. Last year, I think it, I think it was the, the top 80,000. Is it? Okay. Well, whatever. It was, That's... It, was either, it was either 60 or 80. It was, yeah. it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah, like you said, um, they, don't, they probably don't get much time. And I, and I do recall, because I, I went to um, several panels that were in the same area, uh, you know, the, 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 the 300 level, uh, where we, where we went to the vertigo panel together. Right. 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 Anyway, I, I remember seeing this one particular minion and, uh, she was there Saturday and Sunday, mm. uh, as far as I know all day. So I, you know, I, I don't know what, what they sign up for and, or why they, you know, what, what they're getting out of it. But, um, anyway, I, I just appreciate, uh, the minions who, you know, they're just they're just trying to do their the the, the best job that they can uh, sure. with a sometimes potentially uh, trying situation. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. definitely. So anyway, uh, okay. So let's let's move on. Oh wait, wait. Let's let's actually back up. So let's talk about Image Expo because mm. Image Expo was held in Seattle, Washington this year, mm -hmm. and it was the day before the con opened. So it was the Wednesday, right? Uh, uh, right before the con, the problem. So you know, exciting, right? Because I've always wanted to go to an, M Same to an here, image expo. Right? Yeah. The problem with that, however, is that they announced it. What about? I don't know. Three or four weeks before the con, it was less yeah. than that, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and it's about there. It was less than a month for sure. Okay, so I within mean, so, a month. Yeah, it was less than a month. I mean, three or four weeks. I would, yeah, somewhere around there, I think. Right. So. For those of us who already, you know, made the plans, uh, secured our rooms, maybe right. even bought, you know, airline tickets. Uh, that wasn't me or you, but, right. but you know, people fly to the con. Oh yeah. They, I don't know. I, I was, I was, and this is not the con's fault at all. This is image, <laughs> but it kind of disappointed me. I was not able to go uh, to probably the only image expo that I could easily right. get to. Right. Because of the way that they did it, why did they not announce this, you know, much earlier? I, I don't know. I don't know what made them to suddenly decide to do that and whatnot. And, and, and I, I wouldn't excuse the con completely. I mean, they they endorsed it; their names on all of it. You're right; they did. You know, so I mean, I mean, I'm sure it was kind of oh, opportunity strikes. Let's 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 take it, kind of a maybe, thing. Maybe, yeah. But but true. yeah, I mean, it was it was, um, you know, well without you know outside of I mean work quasi local you know we're a you know five six hour drive from there so i mean that makes us a lot more local than the people who are truly traveling from out of town and that it still made that impossible the only people who really would get to go to that would be mostly i would guess local people right mm -hmm. i mean you would i mean because you'd have to change plane tickets you'd have to change you know, you'd get extra hotel um i couldn't work it out i tried i, I tried I figured, well, I'll just, I don't know, wander the streets on Thursday because I didn't have con tickets for Thursday, but but still to go to that Wednesday because that's an all-day thing. <laughs> I mean, besides just the announcements that we see on the internet, there's it's an all-day thing. They have, you know, basically panels that go on all day long. And then, they, of course, they had a big ball at the end of the day if you really wanted to continue to rub elbows with the creators and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm bummed about that. I'm bummed yeah. that I didn't... That that didn't work out, and and the biggest gripe is the fact is is they it, there wasn't enough time to make a plan, you know. And it seems to me like all the other image expos I've known about them way in advance. I thought, but right. maybe not. Yeah, yeah, maybe it, yeah. Maybe it felt like a long time because of course I wasn't going to what else was going on around it, so therefore I wasn't planning anything. So it seemed like when they announced they were going to have the announcements, it, it seemed like a long time. I, I don't know. I'd have to actually, I guess, do internet searches to see how realistic that is between right. <laughs> when I heard about it and what it happened. It just felt very, very short, very like, who's going to get to go to that, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, yeah, very jealous. 
very jealous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, do you, Travis, you want to talk? Let's talk a little bit about some of the announcements because um, there's a lot of stuff. I don't remember the the, the number of things projects um, that were talked about, uh, and not all of them I'm interested in. But I wanted mm-hmm. to just briefly yeah. mention some of the things that I I, I, I am interested in. Sure. Uh, but but I also noticed too, and and I I think I saw you tweeting about this. Wondering uh, when these books will actually come out, right. because right. Uh, according to this article I'm looking at on CBR, uh, the majority of these, the vast majority of these, um, are saying, well, okay, a few are saying summer 2016. Most of them are saying fall 2016. There's a couple that I saw that uh, say December 2016, and one that is saying spring of next year. Yeah. So a lot of these are coming out. Um, well, I, you know, potentially summer is only a few months away as we record this. So, you know, maybe they could, they could be out, uh, when, when they say, but, uh, as we all know (laughs) that you, you can make these announcements, but, uh, whether or not they actually come out at that, at that time. And that seems to be, uh, the word issue comes to mind, but that's not really, that's not the, the right word, but that, that seems to be, um, uh, just kind of the 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 norm, I guess. Yeah, when, it definitely when, is. You know, the, when, whenever Image Expo happens and they make these announcements, it seems like uh, the number of comics that actually come out when they anticipate them coming out are, are few, fewer anyway. Right. It's, it seems to me like there are a few creators, if they say my book's coming out this time, unless, you know, something traumatic happens to one of the people who's producing the book, we're going to see it. Um I can't remember off the top of my head when the the Brubaker Phillips book when they've said it's coming out. I, I would bet I would bet paychecks that their book's going to come out when they say it's going to come out, mm-hmm. unless something unless something like I said something traumatic happens to one of those creators. Because and and maybe this isn't the word to use. They're really professional, and Ooh. and Ooh. and I know because because <laughs> then I'm implying that those other people aren't. Um, but I, I think they have an understanding of what deadlines mean and and um and and that they know us as fans want to have some sort of understanding of when something's being produced you know when it's coming out when it's not coming out that sort of stuff so we're not kind of left hanging and wondering what's going on um and so we get those books in a timely fashion it's just like the last bunch when when they were announced and whatnot um there are just certain creators you know rutka for instance you know, generally is not going to say this is something's coming out in a certain time unless he knows that's really when it's going to come out. And he gets upset when it doesn't. If something falls apart, um, you know, he's had some announcements in the past that have kind of gone, you know, gone south and and it upsets him. That, so he doesn't want to be, you know, stuck in that kind of a position. Whereas some of this stuff, I mean, hell, there's still, there's more than half of the books that were announced at the last Image Expo have not been released yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So no wonder you made that comment. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, so there's a definitely a difference between announcing, hey, this is some cool stuff we think we're going to do, and realistically, whether or not that's going to come out and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. they are, t- are two totally separate, you know, kind of things. And I think some of them we may never see, you know, whatever happens along the way, you know, because of the, because of the, you know, the way image books are and, and how you're paid and stuff like that. I mean, um, these people the those are paychecks they don't collect until after the fact where some of these mm. you know working for you know corporate comics you're getting paid up front or while it's happening instead of after the fact and so i'm sure you have to pay bills and so these kind of projects which are personal projects to some degree get set to the side right mm. I'm, I'm assuming that's some of the reasons why we don't see stuff or it takes forever you know to you know to get it kind of a stuff but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and there, there's there's a book coming out too that uh Speaking of a long uh, time between announcement and when it's going to come out, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, back to Image Expo. So, what are some of these titles that uh, you are excited about? Well, of course, the um, the oh, what the heck's it called? The the Brubaker and and Phillips book. I don't know. So that's Killer Be Killed. Killer Be Killed. Um, looking forward to that solely based on the people who are producing it. Um, yes. I, you know what? I, I saw that. I saw that they were doing a new book and uh, I don't care what it's about. Right. I, don't think, I don't even think I read the description because 
it's Brubaker and Phillips and right. Brightweiser doing colors. I right. will I will buy anything that yep. team puts out. I don't care what it is. Yeah, same here. Basically, the only thing I know about it, really, to tell you the truth, is is that it is um, um, it's going to be a ongoing, long term, ongoing book. Oh, Brew, really? Brubaker, Not- Brubaker said that he that you know he has been kind of away from those. You know, he's he's written stuff where he's known there's a definite finite, this is how long I'm going to, you know, whether they tell us. He knows it was only going to be about yo long and that's what he was going to do. Um, that he's read some stuff lately that that he's really um, interested in the long-term serialization of a story and what you can do with that process. And so he wants this to be that, is what it sounded to me like. Oh, excellent. Because yeah, that's one of the things that I, I actually... <laughs> don't like is too strong of a phrase uh, about the, the, the Brubaker Phillips series is that, you know, they, they last what, well, uh, a couple, a couple of years and that's it. Right. Well, and, and I don't know, part of me likes the never knowing, you know, I, I don't know if you're like me, if I know something is six issues or it's 12 issues or whatever, you can see the plotting going on, I guess. And in my head, I'm like, okay, we're at about the middle we're getting to the whatever. I know we're on the downswing. Do you know what I mean? You know it's gonna. It has to close up here so you can speculate. This is what's gonna happen. I don't know. To me, it, it pulls me somewhat out of the story if I once I know that it's 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 finite. It kind of. Whereas if it, if I don't know how long it's gonna be, it's just a. It, so then it's a mystery of I don't you know what we're exploring and whatnot. So, right. But but t- for me, and I, I agree with you. But um, but for me, it's like it. If it appears open ended, then the I start running. I start seeing where they could go off on this particular path, and and explore this this side or this this yeah this side of the story, and then come back into the main story, and they could they could branch out all different ways, and then it's over, <laughs> and I wanted right. all those other stories involved in that in that world, right? So so it's it's kind of disappointing, but. Uh, at the same time, it's Brute Baker and Phillips, so right. it's, it's, it's excellent work. Right, it's tight. It still it, it does everything it's supposed to do and whatnot. So, yeah, we're we're ridiculous for complaining. I know, right? <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah. So, then, so that's the top. That's the top book. That for me, that was the top yes. book. I was like, oh, and I was because I I just kind of figured, you know, they they closed down um, the fade out soon. We had to be being told what their next thing was going to be. So that was that was um, you know top of the list kind of stuff. I. Another book I'm interested in solely based on creators is um, is Moonshine. Um, that's mm-hmm. a Brian Arezzo and Eduardo uh, Rizzo book. Um, I just I like them together. Uh, what I've read of Stray Bullets, I've liked. Um, and I've liked anything else that they've produced together, um, Spaceman and stuff like that. So so them doing a, a image book, I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to Werewolves running moonshine um oh i missed that in the description <laughs> right so i don't i don't i'm not a, a hundred, i mean i like werewolves don't get me wrong uh but i'm not know that i'm a, a hundred percent on that um okay but but right there so uh, so so this book was was a maybe to me until you just said the werewolves now i'm now i'm more interested see, interested yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, that's a book that I'm that that definitely. Um, what was the the Hickman book? Ah, Black, yes. Black Monday Murders. Yes. Um, Jonathan I, Hickman I, and Tom Coker. Yeah, I'm not. I, I don't know that I'm a huge Hickman fan of <sighs> superhero work. No, 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 of superhero work. But I've really enjoyed the heck out of his, um, you know, his indie work. Right. Um, really, really, really like East to West. Um, you know, kind of a thing. Um. And I guess the reason I think I like his independent work is, is that we don't have editorial why he's trying to tell, because he seems to tell really long stories, right? Or at least that's, that's, that's the thing I get. And I don't have a problem with that. I, I don't have a problem with it taking forever to get to point A, as long as it's intriguing while I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading that or whatever's going on. Um, but I feel like when I read superhero work, somebody else is there, you know, messing things up. I, I feel like, and with this, there isn't that. So I'm, I'm that to me that book um, is interesting, you know, based on what I I've heard about it, you know, the fact that it's got you know kind of, you know, it's you know um, the stock market, and there's um, you know some occult stuff going on in it, and um, you know that sounds intriguing to me. So well, here let me let me just let me just uh, give you this 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 a phrase from it. So this is um, 
Yeah, classic occult indoctrination where the secret schools of magic are actually cl clandestine banking cartels who control yeah. all of society, a hidden world, and this is the part that I love, where vampire Russian oligarchs, black popes, enchanted American aristocrats, nice. and hit men from the International Monetary Fund work together to keep all of us in our rightful place. See, that just sounds awesome. <laughs> it uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I... You know, I can get behind twisted stuff like that. So I, I don't know. I'm excited. I, so I'm I'm really interested in that book. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there are any others that really stood out. Um, after going to a panel, I am interested in um, uh, Glitter Bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, after listening to Zub talk about the book and getting to see like the first couple pages because they had the first couple pages available and then talking to Zub Moore at his table i got to see covers for like the first i don't know four or five issues at least um yeah i'm i'm interested in that i mean i, I like the idea of telling a story about about basically the i mean the whole kind of the the premise that my understanding is is you've got the um of course how hollywood operates um you know women once they're out of their 20s they pretty much don't have jobs the actresses where of course the men can be you know old as dirt like harrison ford and they still have 20 year olds hanging off their arms which doesn't always make sense um and so it's about a woman who's hit her 30s she was a you know a starlet and now she suddenly can't get work and she is going to unleash unleash hell upon um hollywood for basically you know screwing her in her middle age. Okay, so that description uh -huh. and the description I'm reading here on CBR, I don't get the same message that mm -hmm. you just described. What does CBR say? Uh, it just says it's a horror story about failed fame and blood-soaked revenge. Oh, well, I tell you in, the, um, in one of the pages that she shows, she's sitting and she's talking to her agent the main character and the agent is firing her. Basically, I don't want to represent you anymore because you know you're 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 old, useless. So there's no point in me keeping you around, kind of thing. And she opens her mouth, and probably a I don't know a 14 foot tongue launches out of her mouth and drives a hole through the guy's head, and basically oh. just so it's this shot of you know this tongue launching through and blasting out the back of her head. And I'm like, oh, that's wild. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I don't think the text for that CBR has does justice for what's going on and this is one of those cases where i don't know that i would have been interested in it if all i got to read was the cpr thing but getting to sit on a panel and listen to him talk about you know pitching it forward and then being going to his table and talking to him more about it i'm i'm there i'm, I'm hooked you know i'm i'm interested to see what it, it has to do with i don't yeah because the if that's the solicitation text that doesn't it, it doesn't do anything for me. Mm, no, and and uh, to your point about about uh, listening to or interacting with the creators, um, you and I were discussing this before we went uh, live on air. Um, that's happened to me a few times going to the cons. You know, sitting in those panels, talking with the creators, uh, and hearing them talk very passionately about these books that they're coming out with, even the even you know even the DC and Marvel stuff. Uh, for example, uh, I was in the DC All Access panel, and we'll talk about that more in depth in a bit. But um, Steve, or maybe maybe it was, I think it was, uh, Steve Orlando was there, and he's the writer for the new Supergirl comic, you know, mm -hmm. post-rebirth. Uh, and, I, you know, he, I, I, he's okay. He's an okay writer to me. You know, I've never been real excited about anything that he does. So you don't read, uh, you don't read um, Midnighter, huh? No, no. Shame. Unless unless Grayson shows up in it, then I shame. <laughs> I, I love that book. Yeah, well, I, and I know a lot of people are uh, uh, think very fondly of that book, mm -hmm. uh, and and what Orlando's doing in it. But um, like I said, he, he's not a writer that has you know sure. set my my comic reading world on fire. But listening to him talk about his his excitement for and his plans uh, for the Supergirl book makes me interested in it now whereas before i really wasn't so mm -hmm. there, there's a lot to be said about the creators getting out there and 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 talking to the fans about their stuff 
not just in cons and, and, you know, interviews like, I don't know, just, just the, with social media, I guess, you know, it's, it, it's very, uh, uh, it's prolific out there, right. That they, <laughs> they have a lot of avenues to, to right. you know, sell their wares, but, um, I don't know. I, I guess my point is, uh, uh, being there in person, listening to them, watching them as they talk about this stuff really makes a big difference in, in many cases. Yeah, for sure. For sure it does. Well, the difference between a solicitation text written by, you know, potentially by an editor, you know, in the case of the big two, you know, it's an editor. It's not even, it's not even the creators that are, that are pitching it. Somebody else secondhand pitching it. Um, I think versus, versus, you know, uh, definitely a face-to-face -face conversation with the people who are actually doing it. Um, and, and if they're excited about doing it, uh, which I hope most of these people are, I hope most of these people are, so, uh, it's a job. I mean, I know there are some people who are working on some books <laughs> where you know, it's the job. They asked me to do it. I'm doing it because it's a paycheck. Um, but um, yeah, it's, 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 I, I think it's pretty easy to be, to get, con for it to be contagious, to be excited about it if they're excited about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Or they tell you something in a way that, that of course what you've seen in other places doesn't, you know, isn't there. I buy, I bought books at this con that I had zero interest in buying because of the way I had seen solicitation text for it. I'm like, that oh, doesn't it really interest me. Cool that a lot of people dig it. I don't, whatever. And then encountering the creators and the creators talk about it in a completely different way than what the solicitation text. And I'm suddenly lining up going, yeah, how many of these can I buy? Um, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. So yeah. 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 Word of mouth definitely is a, one of the best ways to sell, sell a product, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are there any other image expo titles that were announced that you are interested in? I, well, speaking of talking with creators and getting excited about stuff, I, um, of course the, the, the team that's on the Bernstein Batgirl, as they like to call it, um, of Brendan Fletcher, Cameron Stewart and Babs Tar, of course, announced a book at, um, image expo that they're doing together called motor crush. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. No. I mean, I've been reading the Batgirl. Um, I, I dropped it a few issues from it completing, just because I was kind of tired of, of it. I mean, I think that they attempted to do some interesting stuff with that character, and that's a, a whole other conversation. But I, I have basically zero interest in that. And I, um, at the con, talked with Cameron Stewart and um, and Brendan Fletcher, not so much, but Cameron Stewart mostly um, at his table. And I, I'm going to pick that book up. I'm going to try it. Just because talking with the difference between what they did with Batgirl, what they want to do with Batgirl, and what DC and editorial wouldn't let them do with Batgirl, they want to be able to do here, go full on. And, and so now, more from, almost from a craftsman standpoint, you know, it's interesting their take on what they chose to do with Batgirl, but they weren't allowed to do everything they wanted to do, and they're going to do it in this book. So now I'm really curious to see what them unfiltered would be if they're unfiltered so they can just do what they want to do. You know, they're not stuck having to do it the DC way, or that's too far outside the, of the box that they want to stay in now that they're unfiltered. So I'm going to pick up at least the first few issues of it just to see what, what they unfiltered are like, mm -hmm. I, I guess. So it's, it's more of a curiosity sake than a, than a, I'm super excited for that book, you know, kind of a thing. So that's another book. I know I'll, I'll be picking up the style of just, because I'm curious to see what the quote unquote unfiltered would be like. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Uh, there's, uh, there's one other title that I wanted to just mention quickly um, that I was interested in here. It's called Horizon. This is written by Brandon Thomas with art by Juan uh, Gideon and colorist Frank Martin. So this is a, a science fiction-y uh, tale. Um, basically, the, the uh, Earth is all used up and we go out to another planet and um, basically to, 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 to live there and, and use up their, the, that planet's resources. Um, but then the, the, the person who lives on that, uh, there's a character that lives on that planet. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, that person comes to earth to make sure we finally take some responsibility for our actions. So that, that just the kind of uh, interplanetary political aspect of it intrigues me. Plus I've, I've been really into, um, uh, more science fiction, -y, uh, works lately. I just, I just finished reading Venus from, I think it was from boom studios, uh, you know, about, about people 
uh, well, uh, Earth people going to Venus to colonize because same thing, you know, Earth is getting used up and we got to find another place, another home, essentially. Um, so uh, this 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 intrigues me. And there's there's a few others that were on my maybes. There was one called Prima, which pretty much, yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's involves spies, and I love spy stories. So that you know that 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 uh, uh, kicked me in the brain. And then there was this thing called Prince of Cats, which and the only reason I mention it is because apparently it was a Vertigo title a couple years ago, and now they're bringing it to Image. Really, I don't recall ever hearing about this this no. title. So anyway, it looked, it looked and interesting in 2012. That wasn't right. that long ago. Right. Yeah. Critical acclaim first release from vertigo to critical acclaim in summer, 2012. I would really don't remember this book. So anyway, it's coming, mm-hmm. but, but the, the description here, Prince of cats is this is what got me. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead meets the warriors meets sort of doom. Right. That's so. crazy sounding, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you got me at Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. So, yeah. and, and, I, and I know you're, you're not necessarily a fan, but Rick Remender, of course, has another image book coming out, which I will pick up because I've really enjoyed all of his image books so far. So until one, until one fails, I'll pick that up that, that, um, seven to an eternity. And I have no idea what it's about. I just figure I'll pick it up because it's a, a Remender book. I have to say the I, the title intrigues me and and the the image here uh, with the characters and this alien looking creature on it looks pretty cool. Um, it's kind of evocative of westerns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm I am curious and you know it's the, the and the description yeah the description is kind of vague but uh, it's about a dying knight from a disgraced house on a mission to rid his world of an insidious god who ensnared him in a Faustian deal. I mean how. <laughs> It's not doesn't say a lot, <laughs> no. but but yeah, it it, it looks interesting. So yeah. I'll 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 let you read it, and then you can let me know that I missed out, and I'll I'll buy the trade. Sure. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Image Expo? So yeah. uh, otherwise, we'll let's move on to actually talking about the Emerald City Comic Con. <laughs> right on. Okay. So uh, the first day of the con was Thursday. It's a four day con now, and uh, I know you you weren't able to get there. Um, which I didn't I, know at the time. I was there. I was there. I sat in my hotel room going, God, I wish I was at that. And then, then when you started announcing stuff and then I was <laughs> really wishing I was there. So, yeah. 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 So, okay. So yeah, Thursday I get there. Uh, we, we actually, we actually drive out Thursday morning, uh, and get there about one thirty. The con opens up at two. So we were actually in the queue in, in that big mass area, uh-huh. but not for very long. And, uh, so that was nice. And, uh, so we get in there and the first thing, so my goal this year, as it usually is, was to buy as many back issues <laughs> as I could. And, and so that's the first thing, because usually, you know, uh, in years past, we've gone to, to the merch booth to get the exclusive Emerald city comic con stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, that's one thing I did like, well, they've done this in years past, but, uh, you know, they, they, they announced those things well in advance. You could even pre-order them. Right. Uh, I think this is the first year you could do that, but, mm-hmm. uh, I was not interested in any of that stuff. So usually we do that and then we go off and, and, and look around a bit and then, and then I do some shopping this year. I, we decided I was going to do the shopping first. So as soon as the doors opened, uh, I, I went to, to the, the vendor, Randy's readers comics, which is the guy who, who sells the really cheap books, yep. um, uh, uh, at his booth. And, and I, and I, I, I will be honest, Travis, uh, cause I had told you about this guy specifically <laughs> cause you said you were going to do some more shopping for comics this year. Yep. So I wanted to make sure that you were able to, to go to this guy and, and find some cheap back issues for the, for the stuff you're looking for. Mm-hmm. However, you bought me out. <laughs> I did not want you to buy uh, my comics. You bought me out. So, you bastard. so, so I immediately went to Randy's and, uh, was looking through a bunch of stuff and bought a huge stack of books. It's probably like that many, not kidding, uh, left. But this is, before, you know, I did not know you were not at the con right, that day right. until until that night. So 
so so I bought these comics, um, and then went back several times over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, so uh, I'm really curious what you got as far as Brave and the Bold, because I because there, there were there were a right. few things that I missed, and maybe you got them. So we'll have to talk about that sometime. Cool. Um, let's see. So I uh, did that, and then uh, in the I think it was about four o'clock. If I remember correctly, the DC Entertainment All Access panel was held on Thursday, which which Sucks. struck me as weird because it's a pretty major panel for for a major company, and they had it the first day late in the afternoon. Yeah, the con, uh, that right on a, on a Thursday, the day that you know, not nearly as many people are showing up to. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, but, but, you know, of course I was going to be there. Uh, I tried to go to, uh, as many publisher panels as I could, which actually ended up not being that many, No, unfortunately, um, no. partly because when I got there, uh, the panel was full, even, even the smaller publisher panels were full, which odd, weird to me, but, it, yeah. but good. I mean, it's, it's cool that people are going, but, um, and then, you know, this was me trying to get there like half an hour early. Right. Uh, so I made sure, and, and I, 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 this occurred last year when I tried to get into the, the image panel and, and, and a Marvel panel for that matter, for that matter, uh, you know, I got there 15, 20 minutes early and the panel was already full. So I decided, okay, this year I'm going to get there at least 30 minutes early, if not 45 minutes early, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's, that's time away from the, 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 right. con, you know, the main floor of the con and shopping and stuff. It's like, oh man, what, ah. Which which do I choose? What you know? It becomes a matter of de of deciding what what you're going to miss out on uh -huh. if you want to go to these panels because you have to get there early and not you know not even to mention the the celebrity panels you know in the main halls like right. oh my god because I because uh, that was one of the draws for me this year um, I know I know the celebrity stuff isn't all that that you're not all that keen on it nope. but Nate, Nathan Fillion finally came to Emerald City Comic Con. And and by the way, anybody who's listening to this, you are welcome. I take credit for that because every year I've been going to the con and we get we get those, um, we want Afterwards. your feedback, mm -hmm. you know? And they say, well, who would you like to see come to Emerald City Comic Con? And every year I have put at the villain. So, so you are welcome, internet. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, that was, boy, that was, well, I'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, so... So I go to the DC Entertainment All Access panel, and uh, they made some interesting announcements. Like the best announcement of the year. It was, it was, <laughs> it was Christmas for me. So that's right. So uh, so even you, even though you weren't there, why don't you go ahead and, and talk about that thing? Uh, so um, so yeah. So they announced uh, DC announced a new imprint um, called a, um, a, a pop up imprint, which I an odd phrase um i'm not right. sure exactly what that means does does that well go on and then i'll, I'll interject again yeah I don't, I don't know what that means <laughs> you know called um um young animals which is interesting um it occurred to me after the fact that young animals if you of course you take the first letter of both things does that mean that it's a young adult um publishing or whatnot Kind of was kind of curious if that was the case, but anyway, the big announcement was they 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 pull up um, Gerard Wade, who is the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Which is a, a side note: my daughter is um, fifteen, and just the side of being a rabid fan. So when she heard that he was there, um, things were interesting in my hotel room because, of course, we were stuck in my hotel room and not at the panel. Which you know, she would have been screaming like a fangirl if we were there. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, and the introduced that he is going to be doing Doom Patrol. And anybody who knows me knows that like Doom Patrol is my superhero team. Absolutely love it to death. Um, um, and 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 I was bummed because of course rebirth kicked in and no Doom Patrol, like they played it safe. And I was thinking, now yeah, we're never gonna see an actual Doom Patrol. And so to get this, I'm pretty excited about. It. I hear now that it's a mature reader book. Yeah. So well, not, I, so, to to your to your point of the YA equals young adult, I don't think that's the case here. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. this is this is a Vertigo imprint, right? No, no, it's no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, what they talked about in relation to Vertigo with this right. Young Animals imprint 
is that Gerard Way wanted to evoke the uh, the old vertigo, the old the the original vertigo, where things were were you know kind of crazy and pushing the envelope and pushing boundaries. Even though uh, you know it, it was it was pre vertigo technically, right? What he's right. talking about the but good that, old days. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, those books that were coming out before they decided, hey, there's a thing here with these books and these these right. creators and these stories. We should make an imprint called right. Vertigo. Right. So he wanted to evoke that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, d yeah which, Doom Patrol. Which, right. Super excited. Super excited. Of, 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 you know about that. Um, what? And then they're also doing um, Shade the Changing Girl as opposed to Shade the Changing Man. I'll be all over that because that's another one of those books I absolutely loved. Um, because of course, that was my. I mean, I, we were collecting comics back then, and I was collecting all of those titles before they became what was vertigo i mean i was right. on that edge of oh my god look at all this crazy stuff that's coming out that's next to my superhero comics that aren't superhero comics clearly um and so yeah it, it, you know excited for that uh wh what was the other one the other two was one was oh i can't remember the name it's the one that's set in gotham is okay mother panic mother panic which i know nothing about whatsoever so so that's written by co-written by Gerard Way and Jody Hauser with Tommy Lee Edwards on the art. Oh, and, and just uh, let's jump back to Doom Patrol real quick. Nick Darrington is on that the art of that one. Yep. And yep. Shay the Changing Girl is written by Cecil Castellucci with Becky Cloonan on the art. And okay, what? Yeah, so what? wait, wait, wait. Becky Cloonan is actually doing the art? Seriously? Uh, I believe so. She's doing the covers. Oh, she's maybe. Not doing, she's not doing the interiors. Okay. Because I would completely lose my mind if she was doing the interiors. Because I, I love Becky Cluden. She's just doing the covers. She she's not doing the interiors. Okay, I I, I probably missed that then. Yeah, I I'm don't a, know. I'm gonna look that up as 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 you're talking. But um, uh, Mother Panic. Uh, so that that that's set in that's set in Gotham. Yeah. Right. And, and so Mother Panic is going to be this new character who's going after the elite of Gotham and and uh, the way that Gerard Way described that book was um, this is more of a mature readers title set in the Batman universe. Mm. So that's interesting. Yeah, right. And then and then the last one is what it's it's cave. Oh, I love this title. Yeah. <laughs> cave Sorry. Carson has a cybernetic eye. Yeah. No, so, no clue what that's about either. So, so okay. So, um, uh, uh, Cape Carson is a very old DC character. Right. Um, he's a spelunker, and that's you know people would read about his adventures spelunking, I guess. But apparently, and I didn't even I didn't even know this. He has a cybernetic eye, oh. and so Gerard wanted to. <laughs> Gerard wanted to explore this aspect of Cape Carson. Nice. Um, I don't know anything else about it, but but that. But uh, this is uh, also it's co-written by Way and John Rivera. Oh gosh, I can't read my writing. Mm, uh, nope, I don't. I have no idea what I wrote there. Anyway, but <laughs> shoot, I apologize uh, to the artist or to the co-writer. But the artist is Michael Avon Emming. All right. So All right. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. So what was the response? What was the response there at the, um, to, you know, to him popping up and, and them announcing uh, this? Craziness. Uh, you know, I, you know, I know Gerard way because I know he's associated with comics in some way. I couldn't right. tell you what title he's uh, umbrella Academy umbrella Academy. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's been a while though. Well, right? new one's coming. Yeah. Quite a while, but a new one's coming out here pretty soon. As a okay. Side so, note, but, so yeah, I, I, you know, I, that's in our course. Mm -hmm. I, in the back of my head, you know, I, they announced Gerard Way and everybody's going crazy. And I'm like, yeah, what? And, the, and then, you know, they, they announce, they, they say in, in the introduction, he's, you know, um, I, what did he, I can't remember who's, who was doing the announcement. If it was DiDio or, or Lee, I can't remember who anyway, um, said that a former DC intern and lead singer of My Chemical Romance. I'm like, oh, right. that's why. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. that's why I don't know, but yeah. Um, what was your question? Well, I, just, well, I, just, I was just curious what the response was there at the at the thing. Yeah. Well, so uh, you mean aside from just oh Gerard Way's here and he's doing this 
yeah. this, this pop-up imprint. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, I think I think a lot of just like I was, I was like, what what are they doing? What? Yeah, yeah. And and then they start talking about the the early vertigo feel. And, you know, he, he names off the titles and Dubatro, I'm like, oh, my God, Travis is going to love this. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the, like you said, Shade, Shade the Changing Girl. And that's uh, just like you. I, I enjoyed that original Shade the Changing Man. Mm-hmm. Cave Carson's never been a character. That, but but just the whole craziness of the cybernetic sure. eye. And then the, this idea of, of a mature Gotham setting Gotham titles like, wow, they're really doing something interesting here or, yeah. you know, from the sound of it anyway. So uh, that it was really cool. The the for me the vibe in the room was was wow. This is really cool. This this excitement, um, uh, just just the just the just yeah just the excitement of it. It was just it was just really cool to be in that room when they were talking about all this stuff. Well, because I had heard I had heard rumors that supposedly Doom Patrol is coming back, but I had heard that it was going to be announced at the Vertigo panel. So of course I was going to make sure I, the next day that I made it to the Vertigo panel because that's where I thought it was going to be announced. That that was going to be announced through. The vertigo because i assumed that they were just br- rumor it had it that they were going to bring some of this stuff back to you know they'd taken everything away from the vertigo uh, as far as the um you know those kinds of books they'd taken them away from vertigo that they were going to bring some of them back to vertigo and and so that's what i had heard so i was surprised to hear then that they had were doing a a different imprint and yeah. and whatnot and um, but cool to be in a room where they're announcing some big craziness like that, you know, cause of course they did all the announcing what, well, like the week before at WonderCon, you know, the whole rebirth thing. Right. So I kind of thought, you know, if I can make it to DC panels, I want to make it to them, but I figured there was going to be a whole lot of wait and see is what we're going to get for answers and be told stuff <laughs> because, because of course they'd done the big, the big brouhaha the week before, what could they possibly be telling us now that would be that interesting or exciting. Right. Mm-hmm. But Lo and behold. Well, and see, uh, to that point, I saw, I, I think maybe it was on Twitter, somebody had, or maybe it was some article talking about the, the WonderCon. I think that was, I think that's what it was. I think I was reading articles about the WonderCon rebirth stuff. And somebody, maybe it was deal, maybe it was Lee, maybe it was Jeff Johns for that matter. Um, they said something about there would be more news at Emerald City. So wow. I... I knew I had to go to. Sure, I've heard to, that. To see, so yeah. Um, uh, I want to. I want to come back to that pop-up imprint question uh, in a second. But sure. I looked at. I looked it up. I want to make sure credit credit is 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 given correctly here. Sure. You are correct. Covers by Becky Clunan okay. on Shade the Changing Girl. The artist, and I apologize to the artist Marley Zarcone or Zarconi. Okay, uh, is the artist on that, and it's John Rivera who is the co-writer. Uh, okay. my scratchy handwriting. I couldn't, under, I couldn't quite get, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a three name person <laughs> and it wasn't anyway. So yeah, pop-up imprint. So does that mean that the door is now open for creative, a creative person like Gerard way to come to DC and say, Hey, I've got these ideas for books. Uh-huh. Depending on who you, I think depending on who you are, I bet, yeah. Or, I, or, I, I or think do you think do you think it's it's just because of him and his particular vision that they didn't want to tie it to Vertigo or the main DC universe, even though they're they're using he's using except for Mother Panic, he, well, and Shade the Changing Girl, but but it's you know it's a callback to the original. Sure, these are established DC characters. <sighs> they are, but they're also all characters that are ripe for change. Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, those are characters that are not ripe for change. Not really. You know, let's be realistic here, right? They have to stay within a certain whatever. All these characters, even though they're characters that have been, they're characters that you could just kind of, you know, I, I think it's established. You can kind of do whatever with, you know, you could put them all on LSD and it's going to be fine. You know, kind of a thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I'm guessing it's a combination of things. I think there are other creators out there. If they suddenly showed up at DC and said, oh man, I'd really like to do some stuff with, with these things that they might have enough weight and like generate enough excitement. I mean, so this, you know, guy way doing, doing this, he brings 
a number of things to the table. He he brings the fandom from the Umbrella Academy and that sort of stuff because that's kind of an odd kind of a story um, and whatnot. And he also brings pop culture with him in a sense because I would be willing to bet that my daughter will be bugging the crap out of me about when those books are coming out. And and for her, it's a matter of she's going to read it because of the person who's the personality who's 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 writing the stuff is what's going to matter to her. So you get you have an audience that's going to show up based on that. Um, I, and I, I think it's the same way. I think there are other creators out there, whether they be in comics or otherwise, that if they showed up and went, hey, we want to do this, if they can find a way to create a vision for them, that they'll use it. I mean, because I think I think DC is still looking for a way to get a better thumb on the pulse of youth and way I think is a way to do that. I mean, Grant, my chemical romance has been gone for almost 10 years now. I mean, he has a solo career and is doing some stuff, but, but, but clearly that younger generation of kids is, is list to listening to their work because Chloe certainly wasn't, my daughter certainly wasn't listening to any of that stuff when it was actually coming out. So, um, and I'm not a chemical romance fan. It's like, she got it from me. You know, she got it from, you know, her friends. So that, you know, age group is still listening to that stuff. So I think there's something to be said for that. And I think that's why one of the reasons why DC is doing it also, you know, it's a way for them to reboot characters. That I think a lot of us have been clamoring about, um, you know, just like there's a contingence of people out there that are constantly going, bring us more poison Ivy, bring us more poison Ivy. There's a contingence of us out there who every chance we get, you know, we'll drop Doom Patrol's name down wherever we possibly can in hopes to, um, you know, to bring about, that comic coming back in some form. So I don't know. I just, I, I think, yes, I think if Grant Morrison suddenly showed up again and went, Hey, I want to do some really weird stuff, you know, create me an imprint. I think DC would figure out a way to create a pop-up imprint for Grant Morrison to do whatever he wanted to do. Right. Yeah. I would hope so. Can, right. Can, can, can he do a multiversity imprint? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Right. Uh, uh, but I, just, but I, I don't, you know, I think, yeah, I, 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 to me, that's kind of exciting though, to know that we could suddenly get, something's a little off the, you know, off the beaten path that isn't going to be so strangled by maybe hopefully so strangled by editorial to fit within the, the box of whatever DC wants their image to look like right now. But doesn't it, why not just make it part of vertigo? Cause it, it's, you know, obviously, as I said, and, and Gerard way said, he's, he's well, trying okay, to so, evoke that early vertigo sense. Right. So we went to the, you went to the vertigo uh, panel with me, right? Right, we're both the Virgo panel, and people got up and asked the question: Are you going to bring any of this stuff back to Vertigo? You know, the Swamp Thing, the Hellblazer, the whatever. And and what was um, Chili Bond's response to that? We're more focused on creator-driven, whatever. You know, creator, uh, creator. Owned. I don't know if she used creator own, but she basically said we're not doing. I mean, we got a few licensed things, but those things that we are using that are licensed things are stuff that was created within the Vertigo universe. You know, the Lucifers and that sort of stuff that's what we're going to focus on. So clearly they have they have decided that once they pulled that stuff out of with the new 52 pulling everything away from um you know that was part of the DC universe proper at one point they pulled all that stuff back out and they're not bringing them back to Vertigo. Vertigo is going to continue to be a focus of that. So that's why they didn't put it in Vertigo. Mm -hmm. Would be my guess. It just seems an odd uh, somewhat odd um, sure. situation is all. Not, not that I'm advocating that it should be part of Vertigo. It's just, and because I, I, I do kind of like what Shelley Bond was talking about in that Vertigo panel mm -hmm. about the focus being on the creator uh, vision driven mm -hmm. work as opposed to derivative um, stuff, you know, the, uh, the, the corporate characters, if you will. Right. Right. So, but I mean, I guess this still begs the question. I mean, so Vertigo is an imprint of DC. Why was it young animals? A, a, then an imprint of of vertigo right mm -hmm. yeah I, I get i get what you're saying yeah with yeah. that it, it's it's it, it's interesting um I, and i and i'm marketing I'm looking... that's why well yeah <laughs> well you know and and okay so he, here's 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 my last thought on this um like i said i i knew gerard way in a sense uh i read i read some umbrella academy I think thanks to you. I think you you let me borrow the the trades, mm -hmm. um, but to me the guy is I don't know I I don't I guess I don't get the 
excitement in with his involvement uh, with this? Just because his name isn't Rick Springfield or something, you know, <laughs> he's right comics. So, right? Hey, hey, don't mess uh, with my Rick. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that that's part. But that's part of it, though. I think that, that's part that of it. I mean, but and there are, and there, well, yeah, and there are a lot of people who really liked Umbrella Academy, thought it was great, super excited for the next stuff to finally, at some point, hopefully come out. They've been clamoring for that. Um, you know, there were people who really um, liked, the, you know, True Lies, the Fabulous Killjoys. Um, uh, okay. You know, so, and, and so that's where some of that comes from. I mean, he is, I mean, he has wanted to do comics for a long time. True Lies of the Fabulous Killjoy, of course, was a album, a concept album before it was the comic book, but it was supposed to be a comic book first. Right. You could never get the comic book off the, off the ground at the time. So he cut a concept album with My Chemical Romance instead. And then, of course, this, you know, a couple of years ago, we then got the, um, comic book hmm. based around the album but originally it was supposed to be i mean he he wrote it as a concept for a a comic book first and just couldn't get it that the details of it all worked out so sure and but so but you know from from a from an outsiders and apparently um disconnected from uh, the greater popular culture person like myself sure uh this guy is has written a couple comics he gets his own imprint what <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of, that was kind of my reaction. Oh, okay, I get it. Well, clearly he must. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming he came to DC and and had more to sell than, you know, I'm you know this ex pop singer and you should give me four comic books to control. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, clearly he, he he must have something more than that, yeah. you know, and whatever. I I, I would be interesting to know more of the background as to who who talked to who, how, and what you know. How did they strike this deal and come to the decision to do the four books that they're doing and and my question is is if these four books are successful what else are we going to see because you know if they're successful something else is going to show up right they're going to you know they'll milk it for what it's worth mm -hmm. um so and everybody better go out and buy doom patrol so it's damn successful <laughs> even if it's horrible even if it's a horrible book gotta go out and buy it well, I'm hoping uh, that our our um, our comic book supplier, uh, DCB Service, will provide us with a nice uh, bundle for the Young Animals series. But yeah. uh, I, I guess it depends on so when they're being they, released. I, mean, I haven't, to tell you the truth, I haven't looked up anything on those titles at all. Have they given a, an indication as to when those might actually we might actually start seeing them? Okay, so I'm looking at well, I'm looking at the DC DC Comics website, and Doom Patrol starts in September. Shade, The Changing Girl, and Cape Carson has a cybernetic eye. I will never get tired of saying that title. <laughs> um, that, those start in October and then Mother Panic October. in November. So okay. I guess we won't get a, a nope. nice bundle, <laughs> except nope. for maybe the two. Well, that's too bad. Well, I, I understand why they wouldn't want to do them all at once. Well, but... Right, because you have to make choices, right? Yeah. So there you go. I'm interested in all these, actually. Same here. Same here. <laughs> oh. Now he's got to figure out where the time and money comes from to, to read them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was that was Thursday. Is there anything else you want to talk about as far as Thursday? Oh, we we had dinner. We had dinner. We got together. Uh, yeah. had a, had a lovely dinner with with our two families. Yeah. And talked comics. That was actually I have to admit it was one of the highlights of of that weekend uh, for me. So. Same here. I was I was enjoy getting together talking with you guys and and uh, uh, we, you know we talked about the Gerard Way announcement and stuff and sure. I got schooled on on uh, my Chemical Romance from from your daughter and that was cool yep. uh, you know because she, uh, she doesn't normally talk a whole lot to uh, me so it was really yeah. cool that she was inter interacting with me and you know I talked talked with Ethan and yeah that that was yeah. all really cool yeah. and of course your wife your lovely wife. Yeah. The, I was, you, I, was you, I was told that me and you talked a whole bunch, and I'm like, I didn't think we talked that much. <laughs> Travis, come on! I know I didn't, it just goes by really fast, I guess. And so. It does. I know, just just like uh, what we're doing right now, because we are about. I think we're over an hour in. Nice. <laughs> we're we're only on the first day of every day. One. All right, so maybe we should try and speed through uh, the rest of it. Oh, um, oh, one more thing, I forgot. Oh, shoot, uh, one other announcement at that DC. Uh, all access panel was the commandy challenge 
Yeah. So you remember that old DC challenge that, that they did back in, uh, what was it? 80, 85, 1985. Yes, I, I'm that old too. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I actually bought that thing. Yeah. Um, and so they're doing a similar thing with featuring the commandy character. And I know you're a fan of, of commandy, right? Yeah. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're doing, uh, just, just to describe what this is, uh, they're doing a 12 issue series and each book, each issue has its own creative team. Mm-hmm. And they're going to basically. Uh, so the first the first issue will be this will be the setup, and then they'll they'll end that issue. And the next creative team on the second issue has to pick up where the where the first team left off and continue the story. But it has to be an interconnecting story. Right. Uh, the curious thing about that is that there were thirteen creative teams announced. Apparently. Right. So, what's what's that about? Right, but for, um, for twelve issues. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. But let me let me just uh, talk about the sounds, people involved. Sounds awesome, right? Yeah, and I'm not a big Commandy fan, uh, to be honest. But this this concept, I own them all. I own them all. I know, and and but this concept sounds really cool. Um, so uh, I'm just going to list the names real quick: Dan Abnett, Dale Eaglesham. That's uh, so. That's the first team. Peter Tomasi and Neil Adams is, mm. is another one. Amanda Connor and Jimmy Pomiati, yeah. James Tynan the fourth and Carlos uh, Danda, mm-hmm. Bill Willingham and, and Ivan Race. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. Steve Orlando and Philip Tan. Ooh. Marguerite Bennett and Dan Jurgens. Yeah. Giffen and Steve Rude. Oh, that's. Yeah. Right. Oh wow. Been rude. That's gonna be. No, Tom awesome. King and Kevin Eastman. Yes. Yes. Eastman. Yes. Uh, Greg Talk and, and Joe Prado. Mm-hmm. Rob Williams and Walter Simonson. Yeah. Ooh. Some of the names. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Gail Simone and Ryan, and Ryan Suk. Suk. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. As well as it says as it says as well as Len Wein. And Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Wow! And what are they doing? Yes, I don't know. See, but I don't they're care. The, they're the thirteenth. They're the thirteenth. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be. Maybe they're gonna do like uh, they'll have the main, the main, you know, the the the, the main part of the of, of each issue. But maybe there's there's like a, a backup or some sort of extra material that that uh, Ween and uh, Garcia Lopez are gonna do. I don't know. I'm totally guessing here. Yeah, I don't care. That's a lot of cool but, people in, involved with this. Sure, sure. Anyway, uh, no debut date though, unfortunately. Um, uh, so far as I can tell. Hmm. Wow, that's gonna be cool. Yeah. Okay, so that was Thursday. <laughs> Friday, Travis, what did you do on Friday? So that was your first day of the con. Right. So um, I I came, I decided I was not going to queue up at all. So I didn't I didn't do the, the mask. I mean, all years past, I would get there at the crack of dawn. So I was like one of the first 15 people standing at the very beginning of the line so I could rush in to get whatever I needed to. I didn't have a game plan as far as any particular thing that I needed to get or whatever. So for me, I waited until after it was 10 o'clock and just walked into the con without having to stand in the the giant, you know, pit of, you know, 10,000 people waiting to rush the doors or whatever. So, um, so I wandered in and um, what did I do first? I went to, I went by the Wicked and Divine um, table, basically, where that whole group of guys are at and whatnot. And it was already like um, four rows deep as far as being lined up. I mean, they really are, they seem to me like at the con, they were the, they were the creative team to be lined up for. They were the pop stars of the, the superstars of, yeah. of, the, of the con. It was really, it really was them. Um, you know, that's, you know, Kieran Gillian, Jamie McKelvey, and, um, Matt Wilson, right? Mm-hmm. Colors. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I thought about going there and he said, no, I don't really need to do that. Um, I decided I better go buy comic books really quickly so somebody else didn't buy all the comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. Yes. So I went by and I bought a big old stack. I mean, I probably bought, you know, I probably bought 20, 25 comics that, that early, That's- early that first morning. That's it, you yeah. amateur. No, no, that was the first. That was the first <laughs> morning. So, I bought that, and then I just decided, you know what? This is one of the days where there's less people. I'm gonna try and and run into as many um, creators as I can. You know, get books signed and that sort of stuff. And I spent most of the the day 
wandering around getting books signed, bouncing between the two halves of the con floor, uh, you know, getting books signed, trying to figure out when people are actually going to be at their tables and whatnot. Um, uh, met some other YouTube friends um, on on Friday. Um, but yeah, that's what I spent most of Friday doing was was getting stuff signed and talking to creators and whatnot. Was was Friday the day we went to the Vertigo panel? Yes. Okay, so I went to the, there was an image panel before the Vertigo panel, and I went to the image panel, and um, it was Image Creates Drama or something like that was the title of it. So it had more to do with drama type thing. And on the panel, I'm not going to be able to remember everybody, unfortunately. Um, uh, Steve Orlando was on the panel for his book, Virgil. Um, Joshua Williams, writer of Nailbiter and um, Birthright was on the panel. Um, the artist, to can't remember his name, for um, Ringside was there. Um, Jim Zub was there. And there's somebody else there that I can't remember. A book I'd never even heard of before. But that's who was at the panel. And they, and, and of course it had, um, um, David, oh, what's his name? Brothers. David Brothers runs all the image panels. Uh, he's a great. I I, I, mean, I I think he's an excellent. Um, I like him. Um, moderator. I mean, he, he clearly he's involved at, at at Image. You know, he helps. You know, uh, do a number of stuff there. But he runs all their their panels. He's a really smart grid talker and kind of you know does a good job of kind of interviewing a panel of people to get something out of them, maybe more than we would get otherwise. Um, so I, I sat on that panel and of course that's the panel that, that Jim Zub was talking about his new book uh, that's going to be coming out. Um, and that's what sold me on, on getting that, which the glitter bomb, I don't know if I would have an interest otherwise, but getting to see the first couple pages and he goes, you know, literally this is the pitch I gave them. I, I was confident enough. I, you know, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to, had the artist do these first three pages. I'm going to give them to, you know, I'm going to give them to image and, and, and just go read these. If you don't like it, fine, whatever, you know, and if you do awesome, because that's not how you normally pitch anything. Right. Um, <laughs> but, but, but he, you know, he, he did. And of course the, the book is you know going to go on and whatnot. And um, um, he also talked about wayward, which is a book I have had zero interest in mostly because it's always been pitched to me as being, you know, kind of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer in Japan, and I'm I'm not a I'm not a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. I just I mean, whatever. I mean, it's fine, but nothing that excites me. So I've had zero interest in it. But listening to him talk about the book and getting to see some of the art from the book and whatnot, I then afterwards rushed to his um, booth and <laughs> bought the first trade from him because it it sounded so much cooler than what I had been told that the book was about. Um, it was a lot of Josh Williams talking about Nailbiter. Nailbiter clearly seems to be, it was a very popular book. Most of the audience was pretty excited by that. I have to admit, after about issue five, I think I dropped the book, mostly because I was running into um, serial killer fatigue. It seemed like I had a lot of books at the time I was reading mm -hmm. that were all serial killer based, and I decided, you know, some book has to go. That one wasn't holding my attention as much as some of the others, so that's the one I dropped. Now I'm maybe have to go back and pick up trades and whatnot. Cause it sounds like it's gotten, <laughs> it sounds like it's gotten interesting, you know, kind of a thing. Um, this, Travis, this is just a conspiracy to part, uh, part our money from us. Exactly. I, I mean, that's really what it was, but no, it was, it was, yeah, but no, it was a really cool panel. Just kind of talking about drama and, and how they, you know, put drama in a book and how they use it and whatnot. And, and so it was, it was an enjoyable panel. And then of course, I went straight from that panel to line up to the Vertigo panel because I wasn't sure. In years past, the Vertigo panel has been held in a smaller room and usually has a pretty large group of people at it. Mind you, Fables is done now, and there was always a huge audience that were Fables people. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't sure exactly how big it was going to be. So I lined up for that and was, of course, first in line. I was going to say, yeah. When I got there, you were you were at the front. Well, because there was like, a, I don't know what, a, a you know 15-minute, 20-minute break between the two and i was torn because at the same time the vertigo panel is going on what 10 minutes before that right next door the wicked and divine panel starts yes i really i really love that book and i really like sitting on sitting in on panels that has those guys because those guys are best buddies and and it shows they love what they're doing they love the pop culture thing it's basically a giant spectacle it's just, i think it's as pretty much as close as you get to kind of 
a rock and roll show for comic books. I mean, kind of a thing it, mm-hmm. to me is how it always is. Those are really fun. But I kept thinking they're going to announce something at Vertigo. I need to be at the Vertigo thing. And originally my intention was to go to the Vertigo thing first, because like I said, I had heard rumors that that's where they're going to announce Doom Patrol. And I thought, well, maybe they'll talk about it again at the Vertigo panel. That's why my daughter was there. And I knew if I didn't make sure she got to that, if Wade happened to show up again, because of course she missed him at the other one, I would be killed. So um, yeah, so we were at the Vertigo panel, which was fine because I enjoyed that too. I, I did too, but but uh, do do you wish that you yes. had gone to the image one now? So yes. do I. Because <laughs> they announced nothing. I mean, uh, I really didn't learn. I mean, I like listening to all those creators that were on the Vertigo panel talk, you know, what they have to say and whatnot. They're all really interesting people um, and have, you know, great stuff to say about what they're doing and whatnot. I like those two editors that were there, Jamie S. Rich and um, Shelley Bond. They're both, you know, uh, interesting, smart people who have a lot of stuff going on themselves. Um, but yeah, I, I wish, cause you could hear the laughing, you could hear the laughing and crazy. Cause we're, I mean, all there is, is that kind of, you know, that, I don't know what kind of that, the roll away barriers, what was between us and the other you know, ballroom that had them in it. And you could hear stuff going on. I'm thinking, you know, that I, yes, I wish I would have got, I wish I would have gone to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. For sure. Like I said, I, 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 w- I tried, uh, my intent was to go to as many publisher panels as possible and, right. And so I, I made the choice to go to the Vertigo one. And yeah, I, I kind of regret that. Just because, like you, um, uh, McKelvey and, and Gillian, uh, Gillen are just, they're interesting yeah. and funny guys. Uh, I, I follow them on Twitter. And when they go off of each other on Twitter, it's like, yeah. it's, it's the best entertainment. It, it, it is. <laughs> and, and they clearly they clearly love each other, you know. Yeah. And, and it, it just shows and 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 the stuff they've been doing on wicked and divine has just been divine mm-hmm. so uh yeah it was it was that was it oh i i uh you since you brought up image a, again um i forgot to mention one of the things i think it was announced at image Expo. i'm pretty sure it was at, announced at the image expo uh big news um in the sense of karen berger who oh. used to run vertigo she's editing a book She's editing uh, Surgeon X, or is it Surgeon Ten? I think it's I think it's Surgeon X is mm-hmm. is the name of the title, uh, name of the book. Um, but she's going to be editing that book. Uh, presumably, she'll be doing more work for Image Comics. Now, why do we presume that? I I'm just assuming. I don't know why people presume. I mean, like, ooh, you know, uh, you know, big score for for Image to get. She's editing a book, and clearly, if I was marketing a book, and I somehow was good enough friends with her to have her editing my book. I sure as hell would advertise that she's editing my book because we all know who she is. You know, she's a heavyweight. I mean, you know, she is basically vertigo. Um, and so I'd make sure to have her name announced. Of course she was actually there. I, I would use that as much as I could. I, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm not of the belief that we're suddenly going to see her doing. I mean, unless she's getting back into the editing business of comics. Um, you know, maybe we'll see her, you know, doing more, but I don't, I, I guess I would think that if she was actually working for image and not working for the creators on that book, they would have announced it differently. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they have announced that she's doing more or whatever? Yeah, you're probably right. To me, it was just like, it was a selling point. I mean, don't get me wrong. Excited to see her back in comics. That's a comic I'd forgotten about, but I will be, I'll be checking it out just because she must like it enough if she's willing to put her name on it. I mm-hmm. would guess. I would guess to get back into comics that that's what she would choose to do. But so I don't you, see that as being a coup to Image Comics at this point because I I believe that they would have they would have announced that differently and and shown it differently. I think if she if she, if it wasn't just about her and that book. So yeah. So it might be just be too too soon to to really tell. But but I, right. I, I you know. I could see her doing more. St- maybe it, so. Maybe she's just an editor at large, and she just happened to be doing this book for Image. But because mm-hmm. I, yeah, you know, I don't know how the how the editorial structure works at Image. Is there, it, is it, there isn't one. So it's it's just the creative team works with they, a particular person. They, and, if they choose to have an editor or not, I mean, that's a lot of it. Some well, of those, sure. some of those creative teams want an editor. They feel like they need that that other set of eyes, and then there's those that that don't at all. Right. You know, right. So. You I mean not to say that there isn't, you know, I'm I'm sure there is some 
I, I, I've heard discussions. So there clearly is image does have some influence over the books that are there and, and how they're produced in, in some sense. Um, but, but really it's, it, you know, it's up to them. They may go, Hey, maybe you want to go here. You want to do this, but clearly if the creators go, hell no, I want to, I want to do that instead. They don't stop them from doing whatever, but I, but I know there is some, you know, conversation with those upper, you know, mm -hmm. people there, but there really isn't an, an editorial staff. I mean that, you know, Dave brothers is the editorial staff in a sense, because mm -hmm. he does, he does help kind of, you know, move things one direction or another. But, but all based on a suggestion, not as in this is where we want the line to go or that sort of thing. So, But still, uh, Karen Berger, you know, back to editing comics, whether big it's this, big this one. Yeah, it, yeah. Big she, she obviously has the reputation that she deserves here. Mm -hmm. um, so we should be paying attention to that. Yeah. Uh, anything else on, on uh, Friday for you, Travis? No, uh, no. No, I, I went, you know, I, I went and did a bunch of shopping, but yeah. So I did the same thing. Uh, I, I went back to, <laughs> to Randy's and bought more stuff. Um, and it was interesting. Okay. So I, I said I w earlier, I was going to talk about, uh, some reactions to the way that the con is being run now. I don't know. I don't know if this has anything to do with it for sure. But I was I was asking Randy about uh, how things were going for him as far as sales go because he's been there every year that I've been at the con and mm -hmm. I buy a ton of books from the guy and I, I'm just amazed that he that he continues to provide s such a um, uh, an interesting collection of books and so cheaply, right? Um, but he said he surprised me in his answer. He said that he may not be back next year. I heard that. From a number of comic book vendors. Yes. So one of the things that he said, you know, it cost him, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but it cost him twelve hundred dollars just to be there. You know, that's that's the the booth cost, and also uh, he had he mentioned something about paying people to help him get all the stuff in and out and all that stuff. Sure. So you know, he's got he's got to sell twelve hundred dollars worth of of inventory at minimum just to break even. Mm -hmm. And he's selling his books at, you know, usually one or two dollars. Right. For the most part. I mean, there there are some that I a few six or seven dollar ones. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I and I bought a few of those this time, but but for the most part, they're pretty cheap comics. And so he he's he has to sell a lot of stuff to to break even. And there were a few other comments from uh not not necessarily comic vendors that I encountered, but other vendors who were mm, not as happy about the sit certain situations. There was one vendor that was upstairs where all of the uh, right um, one photo ops selling comics. Whatnot. The one, the one, the one lady that was up there selling comics. Oh no, not, that's not who I'm oh, talking oh, about. Okay, okay, but okay, but still, that obviously there's there's more than just one. Yeah. Uh, no, there's another vendor who is like, you know, no one knew we were up here. You know, they they felt like the the ad the con advertising or at least the. Um, the information placement or whatever you want to call it was not good enough for that area that was upstairs, mm -hmm. even though it was a high traffic area. Nobody, I don't, I didn't see as many people walking around the vendor stuff as there were, you know, in comparison to the ton of people who yeah. were lined up for autographs and photo ops. Right. So I can kind of, I can understand their, their frustration there. So, um, and there's some other things I'll, I'll get to, but, um, let's see here. So I, so I did that. We went to the, we went to, there was a Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog panel. All right. And I only went to that for two reasons. One, uh, Madison, my, my 10 year old is a huge fan of that show. We, we, we watched it one time, she and I, and she loves it. I have the soundtrack. She continually asks me to play it as we're driving around, you know, taking her to school or picking her up from gymnastics, whatever. She's constantly asked me to play that. So I wanted, I wanted to take her to that so that she could experience a, you know, fans coming together and singing along. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it didn't work quite like I had hoped it would be or hoped it would work. And then the second reason was that app, the Emerald City Comic Con app, uh -huh. that that they 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 made for the con uh i don't know if you use that or not travis unfortunately yes i did 
Oh, unfortunately. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, I didn't like so, it. So in that app, for that panel, no, not for the panel. Um, I was looking up uh, what Nathan Fillion, because you could you could select the, the the celebrity guest and to see what, what they were doing, and it listed all of his autograph sessions. Sure. It also listed him as host for the sing-along blog. Really? That Now, that was not part of... If you went to the the panel description on the website, that was not listed there. But okay. in this app, it listed him as as host. So I thought, how cool would that be if yeah. you go to this panel to, sure. to watch the sing along blog and sing along and Nathan Fillion comes out to sing Captain Hammer's parts? Right. Right? Right. Okay. Down to earth. He didn't show up. No, of course they, not. They even announced this at the beginning. Nathan Fillion will not be here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and then they had some technical difficulties. We all we actually didn't even get to finish watching the the whole thing. Uh, so, but you know, we went to that. Um, there was a gentleman that I was sitting next to who was rather boist, boisterous in his singing, and uh, <laughs> Madison commented later <laughs> that she was disappointed because she couldn't hear. She couldn't, she couldn't hear the because, actual the actual sing along blog um, performance, right? Because this guy was singing so loudly. Uh, but you know what? He was a he was a super fan, and he was he was getting out of that panel what he wanted to get out of that panel. So you know, more power to him. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, oh, uh, have you Travis? Have you heard about the series Con Man? No. It, it's it was one of those um i don't know if it was a kickstarter or if it was one of the i think maybe uh, indiegogo maybe i think it was yeah i think it was done through there but but uh, but a crowdsource thing this is this is a project that alan tudyk of uh, firefly firefly fame um okay. put together him and nathan fillion worked on it they got together pj harzma to produce it they got a bunch of different people involved uh i if you're at all interested travis i'll let you borrow borrow my dvd that i bought there because it's it's so much fun. Um, it it, it kind of pokes fun at cons and mm. the things that happen at cons. But you know, if you, if you you know don't take those things too seriously, it, it's it's quite entertaining. It's quite funny. Uh, but at the same time, uh, going back to the <laughs> the management, we were talking to the guy who who sold us the DVD, and he made a, a mention of how the con. So you know, I think my wife actually asked you know or said something along the lines, you know, it'd be really cool if Alan Tudyk was here to help promote this. And, and uh, like I said, I don't remember who said it, if it was him or her, but uh, he told us that the con would not pay. They wanted to bring Alan out for this because PJ Harzman was actually there, oh, wow. the producer of, of, of the show. Right. And Nathan was there. So it made a lot of sense to bring Alan Tudyk. They could have had a panel, you know, yeah, everything. Sure. But the, but the con didn't want to pay to bring Alan out. Mm. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, so there's that, and let's see. Yeah, then we went. Then uh, the, my notes for that day. Uh, we went to the Vertigo panel. Uh, I found out about the the Vertigo does its own podcast. It's called In the Gutters with right. Jamie Rich, which I didn't know about. So I'm gonna have to go uh, find that. No, 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 no. That's 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 not exactly right. The In oh, the Gutters. Yeah. The In the Gutters is a YouTube thing that Jamie Rich helps produce that's outside of the Vertigo thing. The Sorry, Vertigo yes, thing is yes. the lounge. Yes, I where, yes, where I see every, that now. Where, right. Yeah, where every where every podcast they have a, a different drink and they they have some fun. Right, right. Okay. You're right. I do have that in my notes. I just I got I got uh confused there. And also you uh the the, the Dark and Bloody series was talked about and then I was asking you questions during <laughs> during the, the presentation. Now I yeah. want to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> Which they showed all kinds of spoilers. Right. Yeah. You of course, that. Because of course the, the book came out Wednesday and of course we're at the and I had a and I get my book shipped to me. So I don't get my I wouldn't get my books normally until Friday. Of course I'm not home on Friday. I'm at the con. And so yeah they were showing the the big reveal. They they actually ah. show that on the on the you know, when they're showing slides, they show the big reveal. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing, but, you know, well, there's that. So, and that was, that's the, the, one of the shots they show is the big reveal at the very end of, of that issue, which of course is the midway point of, of the miniseries. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Travis, if you don't mind, I'm going to, uh, um, unless you have something else for Friday to talk about. Nope. 
Okay. So Friday night, I'm going to, I'm going to go off on a tangent cause this is not con related, but, um, another event was going on Friday night in Seattle yeah. at the Paramount theater that I have to be quite honest. I was probably at certain points more excited about this than I was about the con because this was, so this, this year is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. And part of that celebration uh, uh, was this Star Trek: The Ultimate Voyage? I think is what it's called. But it, it, it's it it was it was a a presentation, a vid- So they had they had video. They shot video for this. Um, but it was uh, it was an orchestra playing the music from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. So the, the you know the the the, the movie themes, uh, uh, various themes from the television series, the, all of the series. Uh, in, uh, as, as they were showing this, this, this video, um, it was awesome. Uh, be, you, know, you know, how big of a Star Trek fan. Oh I yeah. Am. Huge. Right. So, and, and Star Trek, I've, I've mentioned this many times on the podcast. I, Star Trek was my first fandom before comics. And so, uh, to, to be, to be, uh, here during the 50th anniversary, you know, I haven't been watching it for that long, but <laughs> I came about. 10 years after uh, star trek started but um but just to be in that in that theater and listen to that music i i am man enough to admit that i might have had tears in my eyes at one point it was it was was so cool to be there to listen to listen to that main star trek theme with that orchestra i i don't have the words to describe how cool it was (laughs) so that was really cool and i got to experience that with my family even though uh, Madison was bored. <laughs> she sat next to me and she was like, uh, oh, when is this over? <laughs> so, but anyway, um, it was really cool. And it, 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 they, basically the theater was sold out. I don't know how many uh, uh, seats the Paramount has, but uh, I, I heard from one of the, 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 the ushers there that it was basically sold out. And, uh, and it was only a one night performance in Seattle because th- this is, this is a traveling show. It's going, uh, uh, to major cities across the country. And, uh, it was an, uh, it was announced after we had already decided to go to the con and bought our tickets and all this stuff. And, and it's like, Oh my God, I, I actually get to go to this thing. It, awesome. it, it was awesome. It was very awesome. Okay. So Saturday of the con biggest day of the, sh- of, of, of the con, uh, yeah, the biggest day of the show, like, like we talked about earlier, I, I didn't feel like it. It was just like a normal Saturday at the Emerald city comic con, which was right. cool. Very cool. Um, let's see here. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll go first here. Uh, cause I don't have much, uh, I did more shopping. Travis, did you make it to uh comics dungeon to that, to that vendor? They no. were, they're the ones with the black, the black, um, uh, comic boxes and they were selling most of their stuff for $2. No, I didn't get to that one. Oh, you, oh, you next year, you need to go there. Yeah. So comics, comics dungeon is, uh, it's actually a local shop. It's in Seattle. I believe that's the one that Jim Demonakis is a co-owner of or uh, owns or something. Right. Uh, but there, the guy that was there, I see him every year. He's a big bald guy. Really, really awesome. Uh, very helpful. Uh, I bought a lot of stuff from him. <laughs> Went back a few times. I bought a lot of stuff. Uh, and there's their 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 comics. So you know, Randy's usually has a lot of late seventies, early eighties stuff. Mm-hmm. Comics Dungeon usually has a lot of mid eighties to uh, you know into the nineties and two thousands. So they're more more modern ish stuff. Sure. So so you get that nice range between those two vendors. But I buy a lot of stuff from them. That was the day of the Nathan Fillion panel. We actually went early. And you know how big the main hall there. Oh there, yeah, right? huge. It's a lot of people. Well, it's where they it's where they queue everybody up at to let you into the con, right? In the mornings exactly. where you queue up at, they clear everybody out, and then that's where the main isn't that. That I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's huge. It's huge. So, um, so anyway, so so we knew, you know, he's he's the big draw. Well, mm-hmm. him and who's the guy? Norman Reedus. From yeah. The Walking Dead, but he yeah. wasn't. He was. He was only there for photo and I think autograph opportunities. He was not. He, as far as right. I know, he didn't do any panels. So right. Nathan was the big draw. Well, what's his face was there too. John, no, not John. What's his name? The guy who who's now playing the Punisher, wasn't he there? He oh was yeah, there. he was. 
Yes, and he, did, and he did panels. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ro Ro Rosenthal, right? Yeah, right. It is John, right? John Rosenthal? I yeah. think so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so we knew Nathan was going to be the big one. Full, 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 yeah. full. And it was. And in fact, it was standing room only at some point. Uh, it, it, I, I appreciated the con for allowing people to be there in the back room and on the on the side walls to be standing there to be in the panel uh, uh and not just you know say you can't you can't be in here right um i mean they had to make they had to make it more organized because people were just kind of in a, in masses <laughs> right in the back uh but we and, but in fact we were there early guessing it was going to be like that and so we we actually sat in on most of the flash panel so they had um they had the actor who plays Wally West in the show, and I'm not caught up on, caught up on the show, so I, I haven't even seen this guy show up because uh, I've only seen the first season. I haven't watched the second season at all. Mm -hmm. uh, they had Wally West. They had the guy who plays Firestorm, Ronnie. The Ronnie's Firestorm, right? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because there's a new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So they uh, on the Legends of Tomorrow. It's a different different set of characters, but right. Uh, the guy who played Firestorm, uh, Ronnie, in in the first season of Flash, he was there, and then of course um, the what's her name? <laughs> she, she's Killer Frost in the comics. Caitlin Snow, right? Isn't yes, that the character yes, name? Exactly. So so they were there. It was interesting to listen to them talk about the show and 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 everything, and um, and, ta and talk about how uh, apparently they're doing Earth Two versions of these characters. Yeah. showing up in the flash so which makes me really want to watch that second season now uh but then like i said it, you know i was there for nathan fillion and it was it was really great uh listening to him talk he, he's charming he's funny you know i i'm a big fan of his um uh, i have a joke for you travis he told a joke i want to tell you this joke okay <laughs> what the listeners are gonna love this uh what is a pirate's what is yeah what is a pirate's favorite letter r you would think so oh. but it's actually the c oh. <laughs> can we tell that joke anyway i okay. love that joke uh let's see here oh so uh another thing that we did we um my granddaughter madison brought home uh some months ago brought home a couple books by reina telgemeier uh, she she did the the book Smile Drama and Sisters, and so Madison brings these home from the the school library. I get a hold of them and read them and instantly fall in love because these are these are great uh, all ages comic book stories, and they're all standalone books. You know you don't have there's no there's no well no I guess. Uh, that's not true. I guess sisters and drama. I haven't read Smile, so I don't. I'm I'm probably just talking out of the side of my mouth, and I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, good good comics is what it was, and so I made I made it a point to take Madison to see uh, Miss Telgemeier, and and so they could talk, and and uh, we could tell her how much we enjoyed her work, and so we finally got to do that. That was Saturday. Stop by. Um, and, uh, they actually did a panel with her that I could not make it to, but, um, we wanted to, we were hoping to be able to buy the, all, all the books. Um, like I said, she, she, she got them from the library. She got two of them from the library the, the other, the other, the third book wasn't there. Uh, so we were hoping to buy all the books and maybe ask her to sign, uh, Telgemeier to sign them and, uh, found out that she wasn't allowed to sell her books there. We had to go, the, the con apparently wanted people to go to the university bookstore that was on that top level. Oh, right, right. To buy books like that and then take them down to to uh, the creators who were there to, ha to have them sign them, which was, you know, so that's another, and you know, and Kitcher and I are kind of starting to tally up these comments about right. how things are being run now. Right. Right. So, um, and there's another one I'll get to as well. But but in the end, uh, Kitter was able to. She went up to the university bookstore that was on that floor, came back down, and was able to um, uh, have uh, Miss Telgemeier sign the book. She actually That's drew cool. drew some stuff uh, in in the inside pages for Madison, 
and which is really great. And she also gave us, um, she actually did have on her person, uh, the sneak preview to the next book that she's going to do. All right. So that was really cool. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I, I bought a new Nightwing shirt. <laughs> Big surprise, right? Yeah. I should, I should actually show that there there's, there's a couple of videos I just posted, uh, to YouTube where I show off all the comics I bought and then the other things that I bought. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so people can go do that. We went and talked to Kyle, um, uh, from Kirby crackle. Cause we do that every year. Cause Kyle is an awesome guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, uh, uh, he had a, a nerd rock panel that we went to as well. But unfortunately, unlike every other time I've been to the uh, Emerald city comic con, Kyle was not performing. He usually does an acoustic set. Right. Yeah. He did not do one this year because ding, ding, ding. The con didn't want to do that. They wanted to move in a different direction and, or something like that. Uh, what that means exactly. I'm not sure. I heard that. I heard move in a different direction, get, get thrown about twice myself. Really? Huh. Yeah. 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 So that was disappointing, but it, but it was really cool to see him and, um, and, uh, get to talk with him a little bit. Uh, and that's it. That was my day pretty much. I think. What about you? Um, so I, my first problem was I got to breakfast late and, and you know how it is there. There's only so many places you can eat breakfast close by. Or eat in general. Right. And so, you know, um, got stuck in the long wait forever to eat breakfast kind of thing. So I was really late getting to the con. I mean, typically I'd be there at opening. I don't think we got there until probably 1130 or, or so. Um, I had some more books signed. Uh, the day before I had been at... Um, Riley Rosmo's um, booth at his table and had looked at some art that I told myself I wasn't going to look at because <laughs> I really kind of was trying to make a plan to not buy any original art pages this um, th this year. You failed um, miserably on that, didn't you? I, I did. I did. As I kind of figured I probably would in reality, even though I spent months swearing up and down, this is going to be the year I didn't buy anything. But um I decided I was gonna there were some there were some pages there. It was a double page spread from um Constantine Hellblazer that the price was too good to walk away from. And I decided, you know what, if somebody else hasn't bought it, I'm gonna go back today. And if it's there, you know, I'm getting it. And it was there. So I I got that. So I had a long conversation, um, a long conversation with him, which was great. Um for me, he's really nice. I have I've had a number of great conversations with him. So I got that. That took up a long chunk of time. Uh, then I met some a friend from Twitter that I've talked to for years. Um, I met them for lunch, had a great lunch with them. And um, then I, I just kind of, I wandered the con floor and pretty much got most of the rest of the books that I had, that I brought with me signed. I had a, a massive pile of, of books <laughs> that I thought I wanted to get signed. I got almost everything signed then on, on on saturday but saturday was more of a for me because i missed the image panel there was an image panel about 11 45 um that i wanted to go to that i basically i was done with breakfast at the time that it was going to be starting so i didn't i didn't get to it um but um most of saturday was just kind of wander the con floor with no real you know i have to go do this and whatnot i i really it was it was some of just kind of looking to see what was at the every booth, the booths that normally in the past I would kind of blow past to kind of check out what they were. Um, I had Ethan with me, my son. Um, I kind of followed him as to where he thought he wanted to go, who he wanted to talk to and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, Saturday was actually pretty low key. I mean, it was crowded, but, but I did because I didn't have a, Oh my gosh, I need to do this or whatever. It was actually pretty, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. Um, you know, talked with a lot of, a lot of creators and that was my saturday day i after the con was over with um i got a message from somebody else that that kind of lives in the area that was um wanted to meet up and and so he invited me to the um the sheridan lounge and the sheridan lounge is the official lounge of you know emerald city comic con so i went down to that that night i don't know 8 30 9 o'clock or whatever and it was 
packed. I've been to rock and roll concerts that were more quiet, that were that were less noisy than what that place was. Well, and every night that that we went back to our hotel room after the con, that place was packed. So, so it's yeah. So, so like if you weren't sitting right next to somebody, that was the only person you could have a conversation with because, you know, past a single person, the volume was so loud that you even screaming, really, that person wasn't hearing you, um, had a few drinks and rubbed elbows with a, a ton of people. Um, and it, that was, the, yes, really, um, <laughs> that was, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun because. Uh, well, first I got to meet more people that, and, and for me, that was one of the great things about this con was, is, you know, I got to have dinner with you. I got to meet some other people that I've never actually met in person. And then those were all great experiences, you know, meeting other fans, you know, that, that have the same level of love for the medium as me, which is always, for me, is always great. Um, mm -hmm. cause of course we live kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you know, both of us do where it, it never feels like there's many other I don't know. Are we super fans? Whatever we are, uh, <laughs> that, you know, that that have the same level of love that that we do. So it's just cool to go someplace and and have a you know prolonged conversation with that and whatnot. And and I was fortunate enough that you know I, the guy I was originally meeting there, he lives in the Portland area, which gives him opportunity to kind of rub elbows with Portland, Oregon is kind of a mecca for a large chunk of of comic book creators, and so that kind of he introduced me to, you know, so-and-so and that introduced me to so-and-so. And so I got to have conversations with a whole bunch of people that I read their books and whatnot. And it was nice to have conversations with them that weren't, that weren't fan base. That, that's, that's kind of what made that whole, and I feel bad that I didn't like text you and say, Hey, you should come down and I kind of hate you right now. I know that's horrible of me. I wasn't really, <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about it at the time oh, until, no, later, no. until later on when your wife scolded me for not, for I'm just not, jealous. Um, for not having it, whatnot, but it's, so that was cool. I mean, it was, it was tough at the same time. Cause like I said, if you weren't standing right next to the person, you, you couldn't have a conversation with them. So, you know, if two people, two people away from you were talking and supposedly you're involved in the conversation, it was a lot of just nodding your head or shaking your head. Cause you couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> hear what was going on and whatnot. And I thought about stealing one of their, one of their pint glasses. Cause all the pint glasses said Emerald city comic con on it, it had the logo oh. it said 2000, you know, and it said 2016, I think, they can't do anything with these glasses after this. So I have no idea what they did with all those glasses. Huh. And I, I, I kind of wonder, well, if I finish my drink and I walk off of this, are they going to, you know, cuff me as I'm passing the lobby <laughs> or whatnot? I don't know. But The con police come after you. Right. I don't know. So I'm curious as to what they do with all those glasses, but they kind of, they kind of fun to have one of those, but um, no, it was, it was fun. It was, I was up way too late, um, you know, for it being a late day too. Sunday was a bit rough. <laughs> Oh yeah, but my feet were about done by then because I put a lot of miles in walking around the con floor for sure. Yes, but. yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, let's see. So uh, Friday and Saturday night, when Kitcher and I got back to the hotel room, so so the Sheraton has a pool, and so uh, the the girls love to go to the pool, and I'm not big on that. Um, but but Kitcher is really nice and takes them to the pool. So. Both nights we got back from dinner and I crashed on the bed watching TV. I just, I turned the TV on just to have some, some noise basically. And I just, I just snoozed for an hour as they went to the con. And then after the, after they got back and it was, you know, it's still, still pretty early, you know, it wasn't quite going to bedtime and Kitra would fall asleep on the bed <laughs> yeah, as sure. I, as I was cataloging the comics that I bought that day. So and I did that. And that's what I should have done. Every day when I bought something, I should have put it in my thing because then I went shopping again on Sunday and I did what you did. I doubled up on some stuff. So, yeah, well, it happened to me quite a bit, even though I, even though I did that every day or every evening, I still ended up somehow buying. Well, I think it's because I went, I went to Randy's twice in one day. Mm. and and forgot that i bought <laughs> certain books right so i bought them again no no it, it wasn't randy i didn't it wasn't randy's that i did that twice i did i bought i bought them at randy's then went to comics dungeon oh i bought them there too and nice. and had not been able to sit down and and um catalog those things so yeah that's that's how that happened mm. um so okay so sunday let's shall we move on to sunday 
Sure. Maybe. Okay. So Sunday, Sunday was a day for me where I, I was really interested in, uh, so I'm looking at the panels before I go to the con and there were a lot of, it seemed to me, there were a lot of things that were focused on the creative aspects, the, 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 the actual production of the comics, you know, how, how does a writer work with the artist, work with the colorist, that kind of a thing. And so there were a bunch of, a bunch of panels that day that I, that I was able, well, uh, not, not a bunch, there were three, um, but I, but I wanted to go to these. One was a, uh, there were a lot of women in, you know, blank panels right. this year. Right. Nice. And one of them was a colorist panel. And so there were a bunch of, of colorists that were there and they were talking about how they do certain things. Now I was, I went to the panel hoping it would be more of a discussion of, you know, how, how they do the, how they color comics at, right. when they get the art and, you know, the back and forth between the penciler and the inker and them and, uh, it turned out to be more technical than that. So I was, you know, I, it was interesting information, but they were talking about color palettes and, and flattening and yeah. Oh yeah. And flatters that, that came up a couple times in a couple different panels about, uh, you know, the, 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 the importance of having flatters yeah. uh, for comics or uh, working in comics. So, but it, so in other words, it was, it, like I said, it was, it was a bit more technical than I was hoping for, but it was still interesting. Um, uh, oh, that day, that's the day that I bought a, another Nightwing shirt that I actually don't have yet because the vendor ran out of them, mm. but he graciously offered to, if we, if we bought it, that he would ship it to us for free. Oh, so nice. now, now it's, it's on its way. I don't, I don't know when it's going to get here, but it was a cute little Nightwing. It's, I'll just have to show it to you. I can't describe it now, but it was cute. Um. But that, that, but that was another thing. That was the guy I was referring to earlier about, um, you know, the, 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 the con not, or at least that vendor not feeling like the con was promoting where they were, uh, mm -hmm. and they weren't getting a lot of business. Sure. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, that's the day that I had the, uh, uh I actually purchased, I broke down. I, I purchased a photo op with Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yeah. I saw the picture. Awesome. <laughs> It was really cool, you know. Uh, have you ever done? A, I, I'm sure you haven't. Have you ever done one of those photo ops? No. Okay. So, for anybody who hasn't, I'll, I'll describe the process. You get there way early, even though they said, "Oh, okay." So here's the thing: the con said specifically, "Show up no sooner than 15 minutes before your scheduled time," because they, because I was able to purchase the op uh, before the con uh, started. Chose a particular day. I chose Sunday at 1230 because I figured that would be a good, not as busy day, you know, like Saturday. I didn't want to do Saturday. Uh, and that was one that worked for our schedules. So I chose that. So we get there and we get there like 20 minutes early. It's not even, it's not even the 15 minutes, but we get there a little early. Well, apparently a lot of other people thought so too. <laughs> they th thought that they should do this too. It was a ton of people. Fortunately, they had it. Uh, they had us broken up into two different groups. So I was in group one. There was a group two. So it was basically okay. If you're here for group one, come over here and line up. And it was just this mad rush of people pushing their way to you know to try to get there, because you know they, they do say if uh, if you get there late, there's a possibility. Even though you bought it, if you get there late, you may not be able because he he's only there for a certain time. Right, right. And he's got to go on to something else. So, uh, there, there's a possibility that you won't get your photo op. So, uh, anyway, I obviously did. Um, but it was, it's a lot of waiting in line, right? <laughs> I was actually going to go to, I don't remember what panel it was. There was a panel I was going to go to. Cause I thought, Oh, I have, I have a set time. I'm going to have it. You know, you, you stand in line, they scan your, your, your ticket, you walk in, you, you, you line up with, with, with Nathan Fillion. It's, it's, you're standing next to the guy, no more than five seconds. Take the picture. You walk off, right? You don't, there's no conversation. There's no, no conversation. Yeah, he, 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 you know, he didn't even, I don't think he even looked me in the eyes. Um, uh, but, but, but it was still really cool. You know, he, uh, he walked up or we walked up. Um, he, he put his arm around Kitra. He put his other arm around Madison because he, he directed the two girls to stand in front of him. I mean, he talked to them. 
uh-huh. and I stood next to him and he said something like, okay, now, now make me, help me make, help me, uh, help make me look cool or something like that. Right. Right. Smile flash. You're done. You know, we start to walk off. I, 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 I tell him, thank you. You know, I turn to say thank you, but, but the people behind us are already walking up. There's a yeah. cute little girl walking towards him and he just, he just bends down and looks at her and says, hi, you stand right here. Right. <laughs> you know, directing yeah. traffic. Right. And uh, anyway. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you walk off, you get, you collect it because they print them right there oh. and you collect them. And anyway, so it was really cool. I got to be in the, I, I, you know, I went to his panel. I got to, I got to stand next to the guy. I was very happy anyway. So there's that. Then I went to the, uh, the DC art masterclass. Mm, mm-hmm. This is the one where they have this camera up on, on the, on the, what do you call it? The, the podium. Where, where the, mm-hmm. podium. Thank you. Uh, and they have the art the, the they had various artists there. And as, as they're talking and, and, uh, you mentioned the image guy who, who does a good job. Well, DC's counterpart to that is Fletcher or Fletch. And he's, he's been there, I think every year. Uh, Uh, but he, he's moderating this panel. And so he's talking to the artists as, as they're all drawing and you get to see it up on the big screen. Cool. And it was a really cool uh, conversation. They talked about how they broke into comics, uh, who their influences were, um, how it is to work with how they work in, in other words, as, as you're seeing, as you're seeing this stuff happen, uh, uh, on the screen, that was really cool. Yeah, I thought the about high, going to that one. Yeah. Oh, you, oh my God, Travis, you missed out. So they had, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm going to name off the names. The, the people that were there, uh, Steven Segovia was there. Chad Harden was there. Mm-hmm. Philip Tan, Carlo, uh, Pagulian. And this was the highlight for me, Emanuela Lupacchino. She's from Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's going to be working on, I don't remember which book, do you, the, for the DC Rebirth? Yeah, I've I'm not sure. already. Yeah. Uh, she is amazing. So she, she was out there. I mean, they're all, they're all amazing, but she was drawing the most beautiful uh, Wonder Woman headshot. And she's, she's doing it with, with, uh, with this, these, uh, ink like pen, uh, it looked like ink, but it was, it was a pen. I don't remember what, what kind of tool she was actually using, but she, you know, someone even asked her too um, after she, after uh, Fletch uh, kicked her off and put somebody else on to, to show, they asked her, you know, it, did you start this ahead of time? And she said, at first she said no, but she said, oh yes, yes, I did. She actually started sketching like uh, uh, Wonder Woman's face a little bit. But that was it. The rest of it, you know, the hair and and the everything else that she was putting in it was all her just basically doodling mm-hmm. real time on there. And it was the most, like I said, beautiful picture, one of the most beautiful pictures I've seen of Wonder Woman. Wow. So that artist is amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her work on whatever book it is she's working on. Best part of this, though, for these darn kids that were in the audience. Fletch decided to um, that they would give out uh, this original art that these these guys did during that hour. Sure. To any kids in the to, not any to some kids in the audience. Lucky bastards. <laughs> uh, Doesn't pay to be old, right? So uh, and and of course the the, the kid who uh, and he got the well there was there was one young boy and the reason he was chosen first was because the entire time that this panel was going on, he was drawing in his own sketch pad. Uh-huh. So Fletch saw that and said, you get pi- you get to pick any one of these. And wouldn't you know it, he chose the Lupacchino Wonder Woman headshot. <laughs> but but other Smart kids got kid. to come up and, and, and select uh, the art. So that was really cool that they did that. Yeah. So I, I, I meant to go, I, I meant to go try and find, see if his parents um, posted that picture because I, I, I want to re I want to retweet that or whatever to show what it looks like. Cause it was amazing. Hmm. Uh, and then there was, uh, finally the, 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 you said you went to that image drama panel mm-hmm. and image image had a bunch of those drama, right. mm, I don't remember the the act, it was like drama action. There was you yeah. know, all those kind of, right. The, the components to, to us, to a comic book, right. The, right. Or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Well, this one was, uh, collaboration 
Mm. So fitting with, with my, my desire to, to know more about that stuff. And so they had a bunch of, and I, and I forgot to write down who, who all was there. Um, but it wasn't again, like the colorist panel, the women in colors, uh, colorist panel, it was, they talked a, a bit about the collaboration that they have, but not real, not in, not real in depth, I guess it was. And it, and it was, it was the guy, what's his name again? The, the moderator, David brothers. Yeah. Um, uh, he was really good about, about, uh, uh, getting people to talk about certain things and, and moving on to different topics and whatnot. But I kept wanting, I kept wanting him to let them talk more about the actual collaboration they have. And it was, it was, I think it was all but one person on that panel was artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember who the, the actual, the writer was now anyway. So, but it was interesting to hear them talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, but I, again, I wish I would have, they would have done it more so that I, cause I, for some reason this, this year and th- these last few months, I've been really, really interested in knowing more about the collaborative, the, the collaborative nature of comic books. And I've right. been listening to a lot of different podcasts where the writers and artists are talking about the, that very thing. And I want, I just want to hear more about it. That's pretty much it. Uh, Kitra went to the Sean Astin panel. Oh yeah. She's a, she's a big fan of Sean Astin. And, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, his mother it's just recently idea. passed away. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and, and she, she's local to right. us. I mean, she, right. she lived in the Coeur d'Alene, uh, Idaho area. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I wondered if, you know, when I, when I heard the he news, gonna cancel, I, right? yeah, That's... He gonna cancel, but he did not. Yeah. And uh, from what Kitra tells me, um, uh, you know, he did talk about that, but he was, he was, you know, uh, he talked about it. Apparently there he's, he's forming, um, a, uh, some sort of fund or uh memorial type fund type thing, uh, in honor of his mother. Uh, so that was really cool. And, and, uh, he, he also talked about his involvement in that con man project with Alan oh, Tudyk, which right. made Kitra interested in watching it. So cool. we did that. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, we were, I uh, just, just real quick. I wanted to mention we, there were, there were two things specifically that, uh, Madison was really looking forward to as far as the Comic-Con. Unfortunately, <laughs> the people involved in, in, uh, in those projects canceled and could yeah. not attend. One of them was, uh, the actress I'm blanking on her name. She plays Clara on Dr. Who. Do you yes. remember her? I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember I don't remember the actress's so, name. So Coleman, um, right? It's Coleman. It's something Jenna, Coleman. Right? Jenna Coleman, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she she was supposed to be there. Madison is a huge fan of Doctor Who. Uh mostly Matt Smith and uh the Pons, but mm-hmm. uh she she really likes Clara too. I like so, Clara. But yeah. but uh she was not, not not able to see Clara. And then but then we then we got excited because the the two actresses, the the, the sisters and Supergirl were going to be there. Right. And we just before the con, we we actually started watching the show. We had we have them, all the episodes recorded, but we just hadn't sat down and watched watched uh, any any of them except for the first one. Well, we started doing that. And mm-hmm. I love that show. Yeah, it's great, right? Awesome show and the girls love it. We 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 do we sit down as a family and watch this, which means we which means we're not going to be able to get through them quickly, but uh, so we were excited to go to that panel. So I, I was definitely going to make sure that she, she was able to sit in on that. I wanted to sit in, in on it as well. And then I think it was the day before or two days before, two days before. Yeah. yeah we found out that, that, uh, that, um, um, they had other I, engagements they had to take yeah, care of or something. So, canceled, so unfortunately, yeah. Uh, and that, that's pretty much my con. I left and was sad to go. What about you? So yeah, so Sunday, I was beat. We walked around more. I bought <laughs> I bought more comics. I, I bought another you know big stack of of books. Um, and um, it, it was kind of a day to to look at the little stuff that was around and whatnot. That that um, it kind of skipped over for the big name whatever that I was looking at and whatnot. So it was a lot more slow comb over individual booths. What are you know, the really, the, the honest to God, independent people doing, you know, that aren't part of, you know, some 
thing and whatnot. So we did a lot of that. Um, my kids buy tons of non-corporate stuff um, as far as books and whatnot. So I'm going to be reading a bunch of their stuff, you know. Um, so did did some of that. Um, was largely what the day was. But we left at about 2 o'clock because, of course, we go home that same that same day All right. um, on, on Sunday. And like I said, it's a you know five, five and a half hour drive to get home because the kids have school the next day, um, you know, kind of a thing. So yeah, by about two o'clock, I didn't have an actually a plan. We had to be gone by a certain time, but by two o'clock, we were all pretty much, my feet have had it. <laughs> you sat down to have lunch and you really didn't want to get back up again, kind of a thing. So, and, and like I said, having to drive home. So um, that's about two o'clock. I said, is about when we left, had an absolutely great, you know, great time. Um, you know, as far as the general experience goes and whatnot. Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything particular. I ended up buying another page of art on Sunday. Um, <laughs> so it was a Doom Patrol page. So I, I kind of have a, a desire to get a page of art from every run of Doom Patrol and every artist that participated in those runs of Doom Patrol. Um, I, I mean, I've already, I already have a page from the last run of Doom Patrol. This is another page from that, but it was the other artists that worked on it. So, and and it was one of those kind of things. It was a total fluke. I I'd completely forgotten that that um, Ron Randall had done any work on um, on Doom Patrol. He was kind of the fill-in artist, and he had a he had a uh, um, you know he had a booth there, and I happened to be talking kind of talking to him as I was walking around. He was next to Periscope Studios, which is a big um, art studio out of Portland. He was next to them and I had been checking out their stuff. And, and so I kind of ran into that and he had a box of art there. And I, I noticed one of them was tagged Doom Patrol, which of course immediately <laughs> sparks my attention. <laughs> so I'm like, what? There's Doom Patrol pages here. So I, I bought a, a, a page from him, which was awesome. He had him sign up for me and stuff. And while I was talking with him, a woman come up that was looking at some of his stuff and whatnot. And she was cosplaying the current Spider Woman, pregnant Spider Woman. Oh. And she is pregnant, very, <laughs> very pregnant. And we're like, you know, talk with her is awesome. She's a, a school teacher. And how she announced to her class that she was pregnant was, is I'm going to go to Emerald City Comic Con this year. And I think I'm going to cosplay as Spider-Woman, the current Spider-Woman. So her class must be well, she must be one of those teachers that has oh, her kids well versed in comics. That is because awesome. Like, right. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, wow, that's some pretty serious dedication to cosplay to time yourself being about eight months pregnant to make it to the con to be, I mean, because <laughs> she's, you know, she was very pregnant. So it was so, awesome. I, I really should have gotten a picture with her. I don't normally take pictures of cosplayers at all. It's just, I mean, I enjoy cosplay. I think it's awesome the people who do one. I just don't, because I would spend my entire con taking pictures of people because you just see so many people that are awesomely dressed up that, I just know that if I started doing that, I wouldn't get to enjoy the rest of the con because I'd be too busy going, oh my God, I need a picture of you. Oh my God, I need a picture of you. Yeah. But she was perfect. I mean, she's this brunette. Like I said, she had the full costume, you know, the big belly. It was it was pretty awesome. Okay, she was so, just really cool. So so I, I, when you said that, I'm like imagining this conversation that she's having with her significant other. Okay, so Emerson yes. is in April uh, <laughs> in order to do... <laughs> right, we got to count back. Like I said, I was... And she was... Yeah, she was really fun with it because I mean she was that's really all, cool. all game to have the joke about it, whatnot. Yeah, it was really cool. She was she was really awesome, you know. Were there other um other cosplayers that you saw that you thought were just uh absolutely fabulous? I mean, because every year I go there, I'm just amazed at at uh the 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 level of work that the that these these people yeah. put into their 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 costumes and and you know just yeah. make up yeah, yeah, there were it. there there were there were amazing people dressed up as the pantheon from Wicked and Divine. I mean, I saw oh, yeah. I mean, I saw lots of them that were just. I mean, there was just no doubt in your mind that's who they were. You know, they were just dead on. You know, kind of stuff. Um, not well. I guess there's comic books. Um, there's there were some Dark Crystal cosplayers there that were yes, just incredible. You know, somebody play. You know, somebody cosplayed as a as. I can't remember what the Sketsky's name was. The one that gets stripped of all of his, of all of his adornments. So he's at that stage where he's wearing this, the kind of the robe and whatnot. I think was I saw that. Incredible. I mean, because the guy 
you know, he's wearing a helmet. So the whole head is up on top of, you know, on top of his head. He has like a gauze thing so he can see through that. His partner was with, with him and she was dressed as a Gelfling, even had the fizz gig, you know, dog and whatnot. I mean, I, yeah, that was, that was extremely impressive. Um, there were just tons. There were tons. What I was shocked was, I think I only saw one Deadpool the entire con. Oh, really? I saw a lot. I mean, well, all years past, I've seen just tons and tons. Maybe I've developed a blind spot to them to where I just, like, there's a void and I don't see them because I'm sick no. of them, maybe. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, know, but. I, I think you're right. I think there were, there there seemed to be fewer, which surprised me considering right, the Deadpool movie was just out. Yeah. You know, because usually you see people, you know, cosplaying Deadpool as somebody else. You know, it seems to be a thing to do. Yes, you know, you're Deadpool yeah. wearing a, a Pikachu outfit or whatever. And I saw a lot of that stuff, yeah. I just, but I didn't. I didn't see very much in the whole the whole maybe, Deadpool spectrum. I don't know. Maybe maybe the, the, these people who would normally go uh, as Deadpool thought, well, you know, Deadpool the movie come out. There's going to be a ton of us. Right. That's played I, out. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but apparently not. <laughs> but I saw some. I, I saw some incredible, um, you know, z- antennas as I do every year. Some great black canaries. Um, oh. Trying to think what else. Um, saw a really impressive red hood. You know, had the you know, helmet and the whole nine yards that looked really good and whatnot. Um, no, it's like every year, a, a, a great John Constantine. Um, you know, which you think, oh, that'd be easy to do, right? Trench coat, you know, spiked hair and and packing a cigarette. But this guy really had a doubt. I mean, he, you know, the loose tie, he had it, he had it, he had it pretty nailed down. As far was as he me. was he a younger person or an older person? Cause that's what I want to see. I want to see someone who's actually the age that, that John Constantine actually is. Yeah. Cosplaying that's, one those, is... that's one of those characters I've always thought about cosplaying, but at this point I don't want to sacrifice the beard to do it. So, um, <laughs> but, um, but no, the this was, a, was all... yeah, this was a younger guy. This was a younger guy, um, you know, kind of a thing, but I mean, he had, he had gone so far as to you know bleach his hair. So, you know, he was the blonde wow. and I don't, and you could tell that he wasn't naturally a blonde, but um, yeah. So no, like I said, there were, there, there. As always, there's just a, amazing the level of dedication that some of those people put into. And my big thing is, I always think it'd be cool, but I don't want to. That seems so involved to going to the con and then to be in the costume, you know, for a whole day or however long you choose to be in it while you're trying. To, I mean, I guess that's what you have to be that day. It's more about being that and letting people take your picture or whatever than it is all the other stuff that I want to do. Right. The con. And I, I guess I'm at this point, don't want to sacrifice a day to that. Plus just getting it there. Now that I drive, it's not so much a big deal, but I used to take the train and I just couldn't imagine an entire bag worth of whatever you'd have to, depending on what you're cosplaying, I guess, mm-hmm. to take with you that whole dedication to everything was pretty, well, pretty and- impressive. And speaking of that, so there was one guy I saw uh, talk about impressive in terms of the, uh, just the stuff he was wearing. So, uh, uh, you remember in, uh, the tick there was Arthur. Uh, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. This guy was dressed up as, as Arthur. Oh, nice. So full, full white body suit right. big behind him. His, the big moth wings or whatever. Right. they were. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he's a bunny, isn't he? Just kidding. Was it a bunny? I don't know. Yeah. No, he's a moth. He's a moth. It's always called so, him a bunny. But, Cause but it was impressive because these wings were huge. I mean, they, they were at least two feet above his head um, he actually had them connected to his back with a big metal bolt. And a, I think it was a piece of wood to hold everything together. Right. And, and the reason I, I noticed him <laughs> was he was standing there in the crowd. People were trying to get by him. Sure. And he was kind of moving around because people were taking his picture. Well, there was one point where this mom and her uh, young son were walking behind him. And I was behind them. And so they were trying to get by him and he turns at one point and, and no, he doesn't, oh. but, but that bolt and it was not that the back of that bolt was not covered. It was not protected. Oh. So he came within an inch of hitting that kid in the head, oh. scraping the kid across the forehead with that bolt. Oh. And my, my, my first thought was, uh, well, my first thought was cool. Arthur cosplay. And my second right. thought was dude, Cap right. that, that bolt, you're going to hurt somebody. Yeah, no doubt, right? And then, uh, so then later, uh, I think it was Sunday, I was coming back up after one of the panels uh, on that floor, and there were these two kids 
uh, two young boys in really cool looking hawk and dove costumes. Nice. And and if I were one of those people that that like you, I don't take pictures of the cosplayers. I, I always kind of want to, but it's like you know, I I don't want to bother them. And but that's how they want, do it. Though. I, I know, I know, but I you know, I don't know, I know. It feels kind of weird to me to take pictures of people. And 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 uh, you know, like you, I, I there are other things I want to do. So I, I'm I'm just trying to get to those things. And then on top of that, you know, because I was really tempted because you know how much I like Hawk and Dove, right? And but I thought, you know, how how weird, you know, if it were, the roles were reversed, if I were the parents of these kids and somebody came up to me, hey, hey, uh, older bald dude, <laughs> are you <laughs> you really want to take pictures of my two young boys? <laughs> well, they are. They I, I are know. A costume. You're supposed I know, to I ask know. before you take the pictures. Which I, exactly. Is- which is cool. That, that is what's how but it should be. 99.9% of them, if they're there in cosplay, they want that though. I, mean, I that's, know. I know. You know but that is. I just, I just feel weird yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And, I hear you. and then uh, finally, I went just on the cosplay. Uh, this is really not, I was going to say simple. It really wasn't. So as we, I first saw these people uh, in, in the line for the Nathan Fillion photo op, they were, they were a couple rows away from me. Do you remember in Sesame Street, uh, Sesame Street, the the Yip Yip aliens? Yep, yep. Uh huh. Did you uh-huh. see those? Did you see yeah, those guys? Well, I didn't actually see them. No, I saw I, I, I saw a picture of them though. Yeah. Yes. So they were there, standing there. Greatest cosplay at Emerald City right. Comic Con 2016, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I would love to see. I would love to see the photo op if they actually were in his line and got pictures with him yes. in costume like that. Him standing with those two things would have been hilarious, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I, I was. I meant to go try and find that too. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was a good time. Yep. Good time. So, are you? Uh, how excited are you to go back for the 15th anniversary of Emerald City Comic Con next year? Uh, I oh, always want to. Yeah. Well, I always want to go, <laughs> but I want to go other places too. Right. And and the realistically to enjoy them how I want to enjoy them, I don't know that I can hit multiple cons in a year. Not not like that. You know, yeah. not where not where we're talking about multiple nights, you know, especially if it's my entire family, you know, a family of four. Um yeah, so I don't I don't know. I mean, yes, I always want to go. You know, I mean I if everything was available to buy right now, I'd probably already be pulling the trigger and buying it all. Um, I do know that I will clearly have a plan before it it is um, announced was to whether or not I want to go. So on the day that it's announced, the, the day the stuff goes up for sale, I can start buying it in advance. Um, but but I do have some concerns. I mean, because like I said, just some of the kind of offhanded comments that were made. Here's my thing is, is it sounds to me like the creators who brought products s- did really, really well. Like Jim Zub literally sold out of everything. He went to the image booth and got stuff from the image booth and sold that stuff out too. Um, I heard lots of creators l- completely sold their stuff out. And not just the big name people. Um, some stuff that my kids go and buy every year. They buy books, these anthology books from um, um, from some very small press um, people and um which i'm drawing a blank on some of their names and their stuff was sold out so it wow. sounds to me like creators did really well whereas i don't know how the exhibitor booths you know the the companies that the, you know the comic book retailers and stuff like that that bought stuff i don't know how well they did but i mean i heard lots and lots of creators going by their booths so they sold lots of stuff so yay for them but i also heard stuff like well like the one comic book vendor that was pushed to the third floor for instance um she's a comic book vendor out you know a comic book seller out of portland um she got pushed up to that floor she normally in the past i guess would normally have two booths that she usually purchases to spread all of her stuff out she was only giving one and she was told next year that she may not even have that oh that they that they want to go in a different direction with the con ah interesting Okay, so you're telling somebody who sells comics that you want to go a different direction with your con. What does that tell me? Exactly. 
I mean, you know, granted, for me, this is really the first year I've really started, and I'm sure it'll get worse as the years go by. The first year I've really gone and bought back issues. That's never been has never been a focus of mine. That was this is the first year I started to do that, and I expect to do more of that in the future. Um, but yeah, to me, that's a that's an uncomfortable feeling when they tell me that, that that's a vendor that they may not want there anymore is somebody who's selling comics. So well, especially when this con has long had the the uh, reputation of being a very comic book focused con, right? Now, but right, you can so, define but, that as as the you know the creators involved and the publishers involved. But that you know, if you if you, if the implication is that they're not going to have as many comic book vendors there, that's yeah, and this is somebody. This and this is somebody who's been going for you know forever, is my understanding. I mean, this is yeah. you know, and I don't know if that's everybody got that experience. I there must have been something happened because I noticed on Sunday morning I was there, you know, right after the doors opened up, and of course, you know, not all the people who are running their tables are there right away. I went to Rick Remender's table on Sunday because I hadn't gotten anything signed by him yet, um, and he wasn't there. But laying on his table was a note from. Emerald City Comic Con, you know, a, a printed up letter to all of the vendors saying, hey, we understand that you didn't like how this whole process happened. Next year, we've got a new process in place. So there's something went on. Something oh. went on that clearly there were lots of complaints about. I don't, you know, us as the public, I don't know that we would have seen that. But but like I said, there were these notes and I read the entire thing. I can't remember exactly what all it said. I thought about taking a picture of it so I'd remember what exactly. But basically <laughs> that the process, that people didn't like how the process happened, how, how you went about getting your booth, about how you were awarded a booth and all of that. There was something... Hmm. something was not okay and that they were going to do something different in, in the net at the next con trying to reassure people that. So clearly there was some, there must've been something that we as non, you know, booth and vendors don't know right. about that. There was some clearly high level of complaint because they wouldn't think that they would generate that thing for like one person having a dissatisfied. Right. Um, well, and, and it's good that they're doing it though. Yeah, that, that they're addressing that they're right. it as you know, essentially immediately. Um, right. Whether or not it pans out is, is another question, but sure. But you know, back sure. to, back to your your the comic. You know, if 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 they are not going to be having as many or <laughs> heaven forbid all, uh, any comic vendors at all. Speaking as someone who has gone every year to this con, mm -hmm. where this is where I buy a lot of my back issues, a lot of my to right. fill in the gaps and just you know get things that I have gotten interested in in the you know in the year between the cons. Mm -hmm. Wow, that would be unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what that really means. I mean, it's gonna take another. I think another con for us to find out what. Oh sure you know, what does that really mean? You know, for me, it's, it's yeah, half a dozen, one or the other, if they're saying we want less vendors selling comics because we want to have more creators next year. I'm all for that because sure. that's not as much my thing, but if it's, if it's um, let's have less comic books so we can sell, um, you know, more t-shirts and, um, you know, some of the booths there have almost nothing to do with comics. I mean, they may be a, mili a, a, a illustrator medium, maybe, or I don't know. It's it's art made out of bolts. You know, it's it's stuff that that interests. <laughs> you know, what I mean, that interests me well, less. If if it's going to be more of those things, I I have a problem. I have a problem if we phase out more comic book oriented panels and put more media guest panels in too. Yeah. Cause, cause that's not what I'm about. I mean, I understand the idea of, of, you know, clearly if you get the, a couple big draw people come, people are super excited to come to the con. They come to the con, they spend lots of money. That's what helps. Then the, I'm assuming the con can then turn around and pay to get more creators in. So I, I understand how one pays for what I, you know, maybe, what I'm interested in gets paid for by a bigger ticket item kind of a thing. So I'm not saying get rid of that, but I don't want it to go the route of what it seems to me like, like San Diego Comic-Con is now where yeah. it's, it seems to be more about the, the media outlet and less about the source, the comic books. And mm -hmm. I want it to stay about the comic books and it has moved more that direction in the years that, you know, That's the, true. in just the, in just the six years that we've gone, you know, that first year, what it was like versus what it's like now is, is, is different. You know, they get a lot more 
you know, media type stuff and whatnot. And I understand there's a huge draw there. Clearly the lines are massive, you know, for that stuff and whatnot. And, and part of that is just because the source material has gotten popular to make TV shows out of. And so I understand there's going to be more because, you know, the walking deads, the, and, and all the CW TV shows and all that stuff, you know, it's all part of the pop culture and I, I get it. Yeah. There just has to be both or, or I'm done, you know? Yeah, exactly. But and to, to your, to your earlier point about, uh, you know, there's only so many cons that we can go to. Right. So yeah, I, I feel the same way. You know, I've been going to Emerald city comic con for many years now, but there are other cons out there, obviously, right. uh, that I would Lots love to go to. And so, uh-huh. yeah, I can't afford to go to two major cons a year, you know, cause I, cause, uh, most of the other ones I'd have to fly to, right. you know, fly hotel room, car rental, going to the con itself, uh, let alone take my family. So I actually, uh, you know, because my wife is awesome, uh, <laughs> uh, she, she encouraged and is allowing me to go to uh, heroes con in uh, North Carolina this year, the, nice. you know, coming up in June. Right. And I kind of consider that a major con, but it's, you know, it's only me going right. uh, to this one. So that's Emerald city this year and heroes con. And I'm trying to figure out a way to go to Rose city comic con in September. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, then there's, there's other ones, you know, uh, I, you know, I won't go to heroes con again, probably, but you know, I want to go to, you know, C2E2 maybe, or oh, to, yeah. Um, I to yeah, yeah. The, what, what's the one in Calgary? Um, the, the expo or I, oh, I forget right. Which, right. whichever one that is. Um, but yeah, so there are other cons I want to go to. So yeah, I got to next year's going to be tough. I got to, I got to decide what, what I'm going to do. But, but then again, on the other hand, my this girls, is our con. It's, it's our con. And, and my right. girls love to go. Um, right. uh, Kitra actually enjoys it too, you know, even though she's not into right. comics. So it's, it's become a family affair right. and I hate to take that away just because I want to go to, right. to some other. We're, con we're, we're, lucky. we're lucky in that aspect. Cause my family really likes yeah, the content. I mean, most everyone in my family reads some bit of comics or whatever, but they always find stuff that they enjoy at it and whatnot, and 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 don't make that difficult. And that's what it kind of is for me too. It's it's one of the big family trips. It's one of the big family things. And so, yeah. if I decide not to do that, what does that what does that mean? You know, kind of a thing. So I don't know. I say hmm, I want to go to other ones, but I also know that the reality is that. It, you know, maybe Emerald City Comic Con again next year. So, you know, <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, we we've we've made some comments <laughs> during the course of this conversation uh, about our reservations, our, um, uh, our extrapolations, if you will, yeah. about the con. But I had a very positive experience. Oh, here, uh, I had a great time, and I look forward to going to future Emerald Emerald City Comic Cons. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's a good show. It's a good show. Okay, Travis, we uh I've kept you far too long. Uh I just looked at the time. <laughs> no. Nope. So, but uh great talking with you again. Yep. Uh I need to get you on the show more often. Um I think I think you know, I I know you I know how busy you are cuz I I right. you know, we 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 game once or twice a week every week. So I I talk to you um about various things. So but I, but I also know how busy you are. You have your own uh, video, uh, videos that you post about comics and stuff, which I forgot. We need to make sure to remind everybody where that is. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm intruding on your time and, you know, we're all busy, but, but, uh, I'd love to have you on, uh, again, very soon to yep. talk about other things related to comic books and, and whatnot. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, is there any parting thoughts that you would like to throw out there? Um, go to a con. I mean, it doesn't have to be a giant one, but go to a con. If you've never, if you're a comic book fan and you've never gone to a con, if you can get to one, go to one. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. Um, and uh, even better if you can, you know, get, get together with some like-minded people and, and go together. Cause that's, right. that's, I think that's the the most fun. You know, I, I, I so look forward to uh, seeing you there and, and us getting together and talking about things while we're at the con. Right. Uh, and inter- interacting with with your family and whatnot. So I, I, 
the the more the better <laughs> i guess is the message for sure so for sure all right anything else nope okay so Let's close out the show, Travis. Thank you again uh, for joining me on this discussion about Emerald City Comic Con 2016. I'm sure we'll talk next year about it or some <laughs> other con. Uh, so uh, if people would like to leave comments about the con or our dis anything uh, during our discussion about the con, uh, you can always do that. Leave comments below. Uh, this will also be posted at my website, longboxreview.com. Travis, remind the fine folks where they can see your stuff about comic books. I'm pretty much exclusively now on YouTube. You can find me at Oddfellows Thoughts. YouTube.com slash Oddfellows Thoughts, right? So, yeah. That's that's the whole thing? I think so. All right. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention, boy, it's been a while since I've done this, apparently. Uh, you could also email me <laughs> at longboxreview at gmail.com. And I'm on Twitter at longboxreview. And Travis is on Twitter at... Odd fellow's thoughts? Nope. No, I nope. always forget that. Yeah. <laughs> the underscore gaunt underscore man is where I'm at there. How confusing is that? Come on, Travis. That's because when I started doing this, I, I didn't think I was going to be a, a a a global powerhouse in in social media. So. <laughs> right. So in case these people didn't hear that, uh, because I was laughing over you, it's it's the underscore gaunt underscore man. Yes. On Twitter, and. Uh, yeah, go follow Travis, go watch his videos, and uh, thanks for watching for those who watch the the live Hangout uh, or the recording of the live Hangout afterwards. Either way, uh, this will, of course, will be become the audio podcast in the Long Box Review feed as well. So with that, thanks again, Travis, and thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. <laughs>